This is a spoken version of the Wikipedia article on France, read in early April 2023. France, in French, France, officially the French Republic, in French, République Française, is a country located primarily in Western Europe. It also includes overseas regions and territories in the Americas and the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans, giving it one of the largest discontiguous exclusive economic zones in the world. Its metropolitan area extends from the Rhine to the Atlantic Ocean and from the Mediterranean Sea to the English Channel and the North Sea. Overseas territories include French Guiana in South America, Saint-Pierre and Miquelon in the North Atlantic, the French West Indies, and many islands in Oceania and the Indian Ocean. Its 18 integral regions, five of which are overseas, span a combined area of 643,801 square kilometers and had a total population of over 68 million as of January 2023. France is a unitary semi-presidential republic with its capital in Paris, the country's largest city and main cultural and commercial center. Other major urban areas include Marseille, Lyon, Toulouse, Lille, Bordeaux, and Nice. Inhabited since the Paleolithic era, the territory of metropolitan France was settled by Celtic tribes known as Gauls during the Iron Age. Rome annexed the area in 51 BC, leading to a distinct gallo roman culture that laid the foundation of the French language. The Germanic Franks formed the Kingdom of Francia, which became the heartland of the Carolingian Empire. The Treaty of Verdun of 843 partitioned the empire, with West Francia becoming the Kingdom of France in 987. In the High Middle Ages, France was a powerful but highly decentralized feudal kingdom. Philip II successfully strengthened royal power and defeated his rivals to double the size of the crowned lands. By the end of his reign, France had emerged as the most powerful state in Europe. From the mid-14th to the mid-15th century, France was plunged into a series of dynastic conflicts involving England, collectively known as the Hundred Years' War, and a distinct French identity emerged as a result. The French Renaissance saw art and culture flourish, conflict with the House of Habsburg, and the establishment of a global colonial empire, which by the 20th century would become the second largest in the world. The second half of the 16th century was dominated by religious wars between Catholics and Huguenots that severely weakened the country. France again emerged as Europe's dominant power in the 17th century under Louis XIV following the Thirty Years' War. Inadequate economic policies, inequitable taxes, and frequent wars, notably a defeat in the Seven Years' War and costly involvement in the American War of Independence, left the kingdom in a precarious economic situation by the end of the 18th century. This precipitated the French Revolution of 1789, which overthrew the Ancien Régime and produced the Declaration of the Rights of Man, which expresses the nation's ideals to this day. France reached its political and military zenith in the early 19th century under Napoleon Bonaparte, subjugating much of continental Europe and establishing the First French Empire. The French Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars shaped the course of European and world history. The collapse of the empire initiated a period of relative decline in which France endured a tumultuous succession of governments until the founding of the French Third Republic during the Franco-Prussian War in 1870. Subsequent decades saw a period of optimism, cultural and scientific flourishing, as well as economic prosperity, known as the Belle Epoque. France was one of the major participants of World War I, from which it emerged victorious at a great human and economic cost. It was among the Allied powers of World War II, but was soon occupied by the Axis in 1940. Following liberation in 1944, the short-lived Fourth Republic was established and later dissolved in the course of the Algerian War. The current Fifth Republic was formed in 1958 by Charles de Gaulle. Algeria and most French colonies became independent in the 1960s, with the majority retaining close economic and military ties with France. France retains its century-long status as a global center of art, science, and philosophy. 
It hosts the fifth largest number of UNESCO World Heritage Sites and is the world's leading tourist destination, receiving over 89 million foreign visitors in 2018. France is a developed country with the world's seventh largest economy by nominal GDP and 10th largest by PPP. It remains a great power in global affairs, being one of the five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council and an official nuclear weapons state. France is a founding and leading member of the European Union and the Eurozone, as well as a key member of the Group of Seven, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or OECD, and Francophonie. There's then an info bar. That is the end of the introduction. There's then a table of contents. The seven main sections that are in this recording are one, etymology and pronunciation, two, history, three, geography, four, government and politics, five, economy, six, demographics, seven, culture. And then there are several sections omitted from this recording, which are see also footnotes, references, further reading, and external links. Section one, etymology and pronunciation. Originally applied to the whole Frankish empire, the name France comes from the Latin Francia, spelled F-R-A-N-C-I-A, or realm of the Franks. Modern France is still today named Francia in Italian and Spanish, spelled the same way while Frankreich in German, Frankreich in Dutch, and Frankrike in Swedish all mean land or realm of the Franks. The name of the Franks is related to the English word franc, or free. The latter stems from the old French franc, free, noble, or sincere. Ultimately from medieval Latin francus, free, exempt from service, free man, franc which is a generalization of the tribal name that emerged as a late Latin borrowing of the reconstructed Frankish endonym Frank. It has been suggested that the meaning free was adopted because, after the conquest of Gaul, only Franks were free of taxation, or more generally because they had the status of freemen, in contrast to servants or slaves. The etymology of Frank is uncertain. It is traditionally derived from the Proto-Germanic word francon, which translates as javelin or lance. The throwing axe of the Franks was known as the Francisca, although these weapons may have been named because of their use by the Franks, not the other way around. In English, France is pronounced France in American English and France or France in British English. The France pronunciation with a is mostly confined to accents with the trap-bath split, such as received pronunciation, though it can also be heard in some other dialects, such as Cardiff English, in which France is a free variation with France. Section 2. History. Subsection. Prehistory. Before the 6th century BC. The oldest traces of human life in what is now France date from approximately 1.8 million years ago. Over the ensuing millennia, humans were confronted by a harsh and variable climate, marked by several glacial periods. Early hominids led a nomadic hunter-gatherer life. France has a large number of decorated caves from the Upper Paleolithic era, including one of the most famous and best preserves, Lascaux, approximately 18,000 BC. At the end of the last glacial period, 10,000 BC, the climate became milder. From approximately 7,000 BC, this part of Western Europe entered the Neolithic era and its inhabitants became sedentary. After strong demographic and agricultural development between the fourth and third millennia, metallurgy appeared at the end of the third millennium, initially as working gold, copper, and bronze, as well as later iron. France has numerous megalithic sites from the Neolithic period, including the exceptionally dense Karnak Stones site, approximately 3,300 BC. Subsection Antiquity, 6th century BC to the 5th century AD. In 600 BC, Ionian Greeks from Phocaea founded the colony of Massalia, present-day Marseille, on the shores of the Mediterranean Sea. This makes it France's oldest city. 
At the same time, some Gallic Celtic tribes penetrated parts of eastern and northern France, gradually spreading through the rest of the country between the 5th and 3rd century BC. The concept of Gaul emerged during this period, corresponding to the territories of Celtic settlement ranging between the Rhine, the Atlantic Ocean, the Pyrenees, and the Mediterranean. The borders of modern France roughly correspond to ancient Gaul, which was inhabited by Celtic Gauls. Gaul was then a prosperous country of which the southernmost part was heavily subject to Greek and Roman cultural and economic influences. Around 390 BC, the Gallic chieftain Brennus and his troops made their way to Italy through the Alps, defeated the Romans in the Battle of the Alia, and besieged and ransomed Rome. The Gallic invasion left Rome weakened, and the Gauls continued to harass the region until 345 BC, when they entered into a formal peace treaty with Rome. But the Romans and the Gauls would remain adversaries for the next centuries, and the Gauls would continue to be a threat in Italy. Around 125 BC, the south of Gaul was conquered by the Romans, who called this region Provincia Nostra, or Our Province, which over time evolved into the name Provence in French. Julius Caesar conquered the remainder of Gaul and overcame a result carried out by the Gallic chieftain Vercingetorix in 52 BC. Gaul was divided by Augustus into Roman provinces. Many cities were founded during the Gallo-Roman period, including Lugdunum, present-day Lyon, which is considered the capital of the Gauls. These cities were built in traditional Roman style with a forum, a theater, a circus, an amphitheater, and thermal baths. The Gauls mixed with Roman settlers and eventually adopted Roman culture and Roman speech, Latin, from which the French language evolved. Roman polytheism merged with Gallic paganism into the same syncretism. From the 250s to the 280s AD, Roman Gaul suffered a serious crisis with its fortified borders being attacked on several occasions by barbarians. Nevertheless, the situation improved in the first half of the 4th century, which was a period of revival and prosperity for Roman Gaul. In 312, Emperor Constantine I converted to Christianity. Subsequently, Christians, who had been persecuted until then, increased rapidly across the entire Roman Empire. But from the beginning of the 5th century, the barbarian invasions resumed. Teutonic tribes invaded the region from present-day Germany, the Visigoths settling in the southwest, the Burgundians along the Rhine River Valley, and the Franks, from whom the French take their name, in the north. Subheading, Early Middle Ages, 5th to 10th century. At the end of the Antiquity period, ancient Gaul was divided into several Germanic kingdoms and a remaining Gallo-Roman territory, known as the Kingdom of Syagrius. Simultaneously, Celtic Britons, fleeing the Anglo-Saxon settlement of Britain, settled in the western part of Amorica. As a result, the Amorican Peninsula was renamed Brittany, Celtic culture was revived, and independent petty kingdoms arose in this region. The first leader to make himself king of all the Franks was Clovis I, who began his reign in 481, routing the last forces of the Roman governors of the province in 486. Clovis claimed that he would be baptized a Christian in the event of his victory against the Visigoths, which was said to have guaranteed the battle. Clovis regained the southwest from the Visigoths, was baptized in 508, and made himself master of what is now western Germany. Clovis I was the first Germanic conqueror after the fall of the Roman Empire to convert to Catholic Christianity, rather than Arianism. Thus, France was given the title, Eldest Daughter of the Church, in French, La Fille Agnée de l'Église, by the papacy, and French kings would be called the Most Christian Kings of France, Rex Christianismus. The Franks embraced the Christian Gallo-Roman culture, and ancient Gaul was eventually named Francia, land of the Franks. The Germanic Franks adopted Romanic languages, except in northern Gaul where Roman settlements were less dense and where Germanic languages evolved. Clovis made Paris his capital and established the Merovingian dynasty, but his kingdom would not survive his death. The Franks treated land purely as a private possession and divided it among their heirs, so four kingdoms emerged from that of Clovis. Paris, Orléans, 
Soissons, and Reims. The last Merovingian kings lost power to their mayors of the palace, or heads of households. One mayor of the palace, Charles Martel, defeated an Umayyad invasion of Gaul at the Battle of Tours, 732, and earned respect and power within the Frankish kingdoms. His son, Pepin the Short, seized the crown of Francia from the weakened Merovingians and founded the Carolingian dynasty. Pepin's son, Charlemagne, reunited the Frankish kingdoms and built a vast empire across Western and Central Europe. Proclaimed Holy Roman Emperor by Pope Leo III, and thus establishing in earnest the French government's longtime historical association with the Catholic Church, Charlemagne tried to revive the Western Roman Empire and its cultural grandeur. Charlemagne's son, Louis I, Emperor 814 to 840, kept the empire united. However, this Carolingian empire would not survive his death. In 843, under the Treaty of Verdun, the empire was divided between Louis' three sons, with East Francia going to Louis the German, Middle Francia to Lothair I, and West Francia to Charles the Bald. West Francia approximated the area occupied by and was the precursor to modern France. During the 9th and 10th centuries, continually threatened by Viking invasions, France became a very decentralized state. The nobility's titles and lands became hereditary, and the authority of the king became more religious than secular, and thus was less effective and constantly challenged by powerful noblemen. Thus was established feudalism in France. Over time, some of the king's vassals would grow so powerful that they often posed a threat to the king. For example, after the Battle of Hastings in 1066, William the Conqueror added King of England to his titles, becoming both the vassal to, as Duke of Normandy, and the equal of, as King of England, the King of France, creating recurring tensions. Subheading, High and Late Middle Ages, 10th to 15th century. The Carolingian dynasty ruled France until 987, when Hugh Capet, Duke of France and Count of Paris, was crowned the King of the Franks. His descendants, the Capetians, the House of Valois, and the House of Bourbon, progressively unified the country through wars and dynastic inheritance into the Kingdom of France, which was fully declared in 1190 by Philip II of France, Philippe Auguste. Later kings would expand their directly possessed domaine royal to cover over half of modern continental France by the 15th century, including most of the north, center, and west of France. During this process, the royal authority became more and more assertive, centered on a hierarchically conceived society, distinguishing nobility, clergy, and commoners. The French nobility played a prominent role in most crusades to restore Christian access to the Holy Land. French knights made up the bulk of the steady flow of reinforcements throughout the 200-year span of the Crusades, in such a fashion that the Arabs uniformly referred to crusaders as Frange, caring little whether they came from France. The French crusaders also imported the French language into the Levant, making French the base of the lingua franca, literally Frankish language, of the crusader states. French knights also made up the majority in both the hospital and the temple orders. The latter, in particular, held numerous properties throughout France and by the 13th century were the principal bankers for the French crown, until Philip IV annihilated the order in 1307. The Albigensian Crusade was launched in 1209 to eliminate the heretical Cathars in southwestern area of modern-day France. In the end, the Cathars were exterminated and the autonomous city of Toulouse was annexed into the crown lands of France. From the 11th century, the House of Plataginet, the rulers of the County of Anjou, succeeded in establishing its dominion over the surrounding provinces of Maine and Touraine, then progressively built an empire, in quotes, that spanned from England to the Pyrenees and covered half of modern France. Tensions between the Kingdom of France and the Plataginet Empire would last a hundred years until Philip II of France conquered, between 1202 and 1214, most of the continental possessions of the empire, 
leaving England and Aquitaine to the Plantagenet. Charles IV, the fair, died without an heir in 1328. Under Salic law, the crown of France could not pass to a woman, nor could the line of kingship pass through the female line. Accordingly, the crown passed to Philip of Valois, rather than through the female line to Edward of Plantagenet, who would soon become Edward III of England. During the reign of Philip of Valois, the French monarchy reached the height of its medieval power. However, Philip's seat on the throne was contested by Edward III of England in 1337, and England and France entered the off-and-on Hundred Years' War. The exact boundaries changed greatly with time, but land holdings inside France by the English kings remained extensive for decades. With charismatic leaders, such as Joan of Arc and Daïr, strong French counterattacks won back most English continental territories. Like the rest of Europe, France was struck by the Black Death, due to which half of the 17 million population of France died. Subheading, Early Modern Period, 15th century to 1789. The French Renaissance saw a spectacular cultural development and the first standardization of the French language, which would become the official language of France and the language of Europe's aristocracy. It also saw a long set of wars, known as the Italian Wars, between France and the House of Habsburg. French explorers, such as Jacques Cartier and Samuel de Champlain, claimed lands in the Americas for France, paving the way for the expansion of the French colonial empire. The rise of Protestantism in Europe led France to a civil war known as the French Wars of Religion, where, in the most notorious incident, thousands of Huguenots were murdered in the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre of 1572. The wars of religion were ended by Henry IV's Edict of Nantes, which granted some freedom of religion to the Huguenots. Spanish troops, the terror of Western Europe, assisted the Catholic side during the wars of religion in 1589 to 1594 and invaded northern France in 1597. After some skirmishing in the 1620s and 1630s, Spain and France returned to all-out war between 1635 and 1659. This war cost France 300,000 casualties. Under Louis XIII, Cardinal Richelieu promoted the centralization of the state and reinforced royal power by disarming domestic power holders in the 1620s. He systematically destroyed castles of defiant lords and denounced the use of private violence, such as dueling, carrying weapons, and maintaining private armies. By the end of the 1620s, Richelieu established the royal monopoly of force as the doctrine. From the 16th century to the 19th century, France was responsible for 11% of the transatlantic slave trade, second only to Great Britain during the 18th century. While the state began condoning the practice with letters patent in the 1630s, Louis XIII only formalized this authorization more generally in 1642, in the last year of his reign. By the mid-18th century, Nantes had become the primary port involved. During Louis XIV's minority and the regency of Queen Anne and Cardinal Mazarin, a period of trouble known as the Fronde occurred in France. This rebellion was driven by the great feudal lords and sovereign courts as a reaction to the rise of royal absolute power in France. The monarchy reached its peak during the 17th century and the reign of Louis XIV, 1643 to 1715. By turning powerful feudal lords into courtiers at the Palace of Versailles, his command of the military went unchallenged. Remembered for numerous wars, the so-called Sun King made France the leading European power. France became the most populous country in Europe and had tremendous influence over European politics, economy, and culture. French became the most used language in diplomacy, science, literature, and international affairs, and remained so until the 20th century. During his reign, France took colonial control of the many overseas territories in the Americas, Africa, and Asia. In 1685, Louis XIV revoked the Edict of Nantes, forcing thousands of Huguenots into exile, and published the Code Noir, providing the legal framework for slavery and expelling Jewish people from the French colonies. Under the wars of Louis XV, reigned from 1715 to 1774, 
France lost New France and most of its Indian possessions after its defeat in the Seven Years' War, which went from 1756 to 1763. France's European territory kept growing, however, with notable acquisitions such as Lorraine in 1766 and Corsica in 1770. An unpopular king, Louis XV's weak rule, his ill-advised financial, political, and military decisions, as well as the debauchery of his court, discredited the monarchy, which arguably paved the way for the French Revolution 15 years after his death. Louis XVI, who reigned from 1774 to 1793, actively supported the Americans in the American Revolution with money, fleets, and armies, helping the Americans win independence from Great Britain. France gained revenge, but spent so heavily that the government verged on bankruptcy, a factor that also contributed to the French Revolution. Some of the Enlightenment occurred in French intellectual circles, and major scientific breakthroughs and inventions, such as the discovery of oxygen in 1778 and the first hot air balloon carrying passengers in 1783, were achieved by French scientists. French explorers, such as Bougainville and La Perouse, took part in the voyages of scientific exploration through maritime expeditions around the globe. The Enlightenment philosophy, in which reason is advocated as the primary source of legitimacy, undermined the power of and the support for the monarchy and also was a factor in the French Revolution. Subheading, Revolutionary France, 1789 to 1799. Facing financial troubles, King Louis XVI summoned the Estates General, gathering the three estates of the realm, in May 1789 to propose solutions to his government. As it came to an impasse, the representatives of the Third Estate formed a national assembly, signaling the outbreak of the French Revolution. Fearing that the king would suppress the newly created national assembly, insurgents stormed the Bastille on 14 July 1789, a date which would become France's National Day. In early August 1789, the National Constituent Assembly abolished the privileges of the nobility, such as personal serfdom and exclusive hunting rights. Through the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, 27 August 1789, France established fundamental rights for men. The Declaration affirms, quote, the natural and imprescriptible rights of man close quote, to, quote, liberty, property, security, and resistance to oppression, close quote. Freedom of speech and press were declared and arbitrary arrests were outlawed. It called for the destruction of aristocratic privileges and proclaimed freedom and equal rights for all men, as well as access to public office based on talent rather than birth. In November 1789, the assembly decided to nationalize and sell all property of the Catholic Church, which had been the largest landowner in the country. In July 1790, a civil constitution of the clergy reorganized the French Catholic Church, canceling the authority of the church to levy taxes and other similar powers. This fueled much discontent in parts of France, which would contribute to the civil war breaking out some years later. While King Louis XVI still enjoyed popularity among the population, his disastrous flight to Varennes in June of 1791 seemed to justify rumors he had tied his hopes of political salvation to the prospects of foreign invasion. His credibility was so deeply undermined that the abolition of the monarchy and the establishment of a republic became an increasing possibility. In the August 1791 Declaration of Pilnitz, the Emperor of Austria and the King of Prussia threatened to restore the French monarchy by force. In September 1791, the National Constituent Assembly forced King Louis XVI to accept the French Constitution of 1791, thus turning the French absolute monarchy into a constitutional monarchy. In the newly established Legislative Assembly in October 1791, enmity developed and deepened between a group later called the Girondins, who favored war with Austria and Prussia, and a group later called Montagnard, or Jacobins, who opposed such a war. 
The majority in the assembly in 1792, however, saw a war with Austria and Prussia as a chance to boost the popularity of the revolutionary government and thought that such a war could be won, and so declared war on Austria on 20 April 1792. On 10 August 1792, an angry crowd threatened the palace of King Louis XVI, who took refuge in the legislative assembly. A Prussian army invaded France later in 1792. In early September, Parisians, infuriated by the Prussian army capturing Verdun and counter-revolutionary uprisings in the west of France, murdered between 1,000 and 1,500 prisoners by raiding the Parisian prisons. The Assembly and the Paris City Council seemed unable to stop that bloodshed. The National Convention, chosen in the first elections under male universal suffrage, on 20 September 1792 succeeded the Legislative Assembly and on 21 September abolished the monarchy by proclaiming the French First Republic. Ex-King Louis XVI was convicted of treason and guillotined in January 1793. France had declared war on Great Britain and the Dutch Republic in November 1792, and did the same on Spain in March 1793. In the spring of 1793, Austria and Prussia invaded France. In March, France created a sister republic in the Republic of Mainz and kept it under its control. Also in March 1793, the Civil War of the Vendée against Paris started, evoked by both the civil constitution of the clergy of 1790 and the nationwide army conscription in early 1793. Elsewhere in France, rebellion was brewing as well. A factionalist feud in the National Convention, smoldering ever since October 1791, came to a climax with the group of the Girondins on 2 June 1793 being forced to resign and leave the convention. The counter-revolution, begun in March 1793 in the Vendée, by July had spread to Brittany, Normandy, Bordeaux, Marseille, Toulon, and Lyon. Paris's convention government between October and December 1793, with brutal measures, managed to subdue most internal uprisings at the cost of tens of thousands of lives. Some historians consider the Civil War to have lasted until 1796, with a toll of possibly 450,000 lives. By the end of 1793, the Allies had been driven from France. France, in February 1794, abolished slavery in its American colonies, but would reintroduce it later. Political disagreements and enmity in the National Convention between October 1793 and July 1794 reached unprecedented levels, leading to dozens of convention members being sentenced to death and guillotined. Meanwhile, France's external wars in 1794 were prospering, for example in Belgium. In 1795, the government seemed to return to indifference towards the desires and needs of the lower classes concerning the freedom of Catholic religion and the distribution of food. Until 1799, politicians, Apart from inventing a new parliamentary system, the Directory busied themselves with dissuading the people from Catholicism and royalism. Subheading, Napoleon and the 19th Century, 1799 to 1914. Napoleon Bonaparte seized control of the Republic in 1799, becoming first consul and later emperor of the French Empire, 1804 to 1814, and also again briefly in 1815. As a continuation of the war sparked by the European monarchies against the French Republic, changing sets of European coalitions declared wars on Napoleon's empire. His armies conquered most of continental Europe with swift victories such as the battles of Jena, Auerstadt, or Austerlitz. Members of the Bonaparte family were appointed as monarchs in some of the newly established kingdoms. These victories led to the worldwide expansion of French revolutionary ideals and reforms, such as the metric system, the Napoleonic Code, and the Declaration of the Rights of Man. In June 1812, Napoleon attacked Russia, reaching Moscow. Thereafter, his army disintegrated through supply problems, disease, Russian attacks, and finally, winter. After the catastrophic Russian campaign and the ensuing uprising of European monarchies against his rule, 
Napoleon was defeated and the Bourbon monarchy was restored. About a million Frenchmen died during the Napoleonic Wars. After his brief return from exile, Napoleon was finally defeated in 1815 at the Battle of Waterloo. The monarchy was re-established and would remain from 1815 until 1830, but with new constitutional limitations. The discredited Bourbon dynasty was overthrown by the July Revolution of 1830, which established the constitutional July monarchy. In that year, French troops began the conquest of Algeria, establishing the first colonial presence in Africa since Napoleon's abortive invasion of Egypt in 1798. In 1848, general unrest led to the February Revolution and the end of the July monarchy. The abolition of slavery and the introduction of male universal suffrage, which were briefly enacted during the French Revolution, was reenacted in 1848. In 1852, the president of the French Republic, Louis-Napoleon Bonaparte, Napoleon I's nephew, was proclaimed emperor of the Second Empire as Napoleon III. He multiplied French interventions abroad, especially in Crimea, Mexico, and Italy, which resulted in the annexation of the Duchy of Savoy and the County of Nice, then part of the Kingdom of Sardinia. Napoleon III was unseated following defeat in the Franco-Prussian War of 1870, and his regime was replaced by the Third Republic. By 1875, the French conquest of Algeria was complete, and approximately 825,000 Algerians had been killed from famine, disease, and violence. France had colonial possessions in various forms since the beginning of the 17th century, but in the 19th and 20th centuries, its global overseas colonial empire extended greatly and became the second largest in the world behind the British Empire. Including metropolitan France, the total area of land under French sovereignty almost reached 13 million square kilometers in the 1920s and 1930s, or 8.6% of the world's land. Known as the Belle Epoque, the turn of the century was a period characterized by optimism, regional peace, economic prosperity, and technological, scientific, and cultural innovations. In 1905, state secularism was officially established. Subheading, early to mid-20th century, 1914 to 1946. France was invaded by Germany and then defended by Great Britain to start World War I in August 1914. A rich industrial area in the northeast was occupied. France and the Allies emerged victorious against the Central Powers at tremendous human and material cost. World War I left 1.4 million French soldiers dead, 4% of its population. Between 27 and 30% of soldiers conscripted from 1912 to 1915 were killed. The interbellum years were marked by intense international tensions and a variety of social reforms introduced by the Popular Front government, such as annual leave, eight-hour workdays, and women in government. In 1940, France was invaded and quickly defeated by Nazi Germany. France was divided into a German occupation zone in the north, an Italian occupation zone in the southeast, and an unoccupied territory, the rest of France, which consisted of the southern French metropolitan territory, two-fifths of pre-war metropolitan France, and the French Empire, which included the two protectorates of French Tunisia and French Morocco, and French Algeria. The Vichy government, a newly established authoritarian regime collaborating with Germany, ruled the unoccupied territory. Free France, the government in exile led by Charles de Gaulle, was set up in London. From 1942 to 1944, about 160,000 French citizens, including around 75,000 Jews, were deported to death camps and concentration camps in Germany and occupied Poland. In September 1943, Corsica was the first metropolitan territory to liberate itself from the Axis. On 6 June 1944, the Allies invaded Normandy, and in August they invaded Provence. 
Over the following year, the Allies and the French resistance emerged victorious over the Axis powers, and French sovereignty was restored with the establishment of the Provisional Government of the French Republic, or the GPRF. This interim government, established by de Gaulle, aimed to continue to wage war against Germany and to purge collaborators from office. It also made several important reforms, such as suffrage extended to women and the creation of a social security system. Subsection Contemporary Period, 1946 to present. The GPRF laid the groundwork for a new constitutional order that resulted in the Fourth Republic, 1946 to 1958, which saw spectacular economic growth, les Trente Glorieuses. France was one of the founding members of NATO in 1949. France attempted to regain control of French Indochina, but was defeated by the Viet Minh in 1954 at the climactic Battle of Dien Bien Phu. Only months later, France faced another anti-colonialist conflict in Algeria, then treated as an integral part of France and home to over one million European settlers. During the conflict, the French systematically used torture and repression, including extrajudicial killings, to keep control of Algeria. The conflict racked the country and nearly led to a coup and civil war in France. During the May 1958 crisis, the weak and unstable Fourth Republic gave way to the Fifth Republic, which included a strengthened presidency. In the latter role, Charles de Gaulle managed to keep the country together while taking steps to end the Algerian War. The war was concluded with the Evian Accords in 1962, which led to Algerian independence. Algerian independence came at a high price. It resulted in between half a million and one million deaths and over two million internally displaced Algerians. Around one million Pieds Noirs and Harki fled from Algeria to France upon independence. In the context of the Cold War, de Gaulle pursued a policy of national independence toward the Western and Eastern blocs. To this end, he withdrew from NATO's military integrated command, while remaining in the NATO alliance itself, launched a nuclear development program, and made France the fourth nuclear power. He restored cordial Franco-German relations to create a European counterweight between the American and Soviet spheres of influence. However, he opposed any development of a supranational Europe, favoring a Europe of sovereign nations. In the wake of the series of worldwide protests of 1968, the revolt of May 1968 had an enormous social impact. In France, it was the watershed moment when a conservative moral ideal, religion, patriotism, respect for authority, shifted more towards liberal moral ideal, secularism, individualism, and sexual revolution. Although the revolt was a political failure, as the Gaullist party emerged even stronger than before, it announced a split between the French people and de Gaulle, who resigned shortly after. In the post-Gaullist era, France remained one of the most developed economies in the world, but faced several economic crises that resulted in high unemployment rates and increasing public debt. In the late 20th and early 21st centuries, France has been at the forefront of the development of a supranational European Union, notably by signing the Maastricht Treaty, which created the European Union in 1992, establishing the Eurozone in 1999, and signing the Lisbon Treaty in 2007. France has also gradually but fully reintegrated into NATO and has since participated in most NATO-sponsored wars. Since the 19th century, France has received many immigrants. These have been mostly male foreign workers from European Catholic countries who generally return home when not employed. During the 1970s, France faced an economic crisis and allowed new immigrants, mostly from the Maghreb, to permanently settle in France with their families and acquire French citizenship. This resulted in hundreds of thousands of Muslims, especially in the larger cities, living in subsidized public housing and suffering from very high unemployment. Simultaneously, France renounced the assimilation of immigrants, where they were expected to adhere to French traditional values and cultural norms. They were encouraged to retain their distinctive cultures and traditions and required merely to integrate. 
Since the 1995 Paris Metro and RER bombings, France has been sporadically targeted by Islamist organizations, notably the Charlie Hebdo attack in January 2015, which provoked the largest public rallies in French history, gathering 4.4 million people. The November 2015 Paris attacks, which resulted in 130 deaths, which is the deadliest attack on French soil since World War II, and the deadliest in the European Union since the Madrid train bombings in 2004, as well as the 2016 Nice truck attack, which caused 87 deaths during Bastille Day celebrations. Operation Chamal, France's military efforts to contain ISIS, killed over 1,000 ISIS troops between 2014 and 2015. Section 3. Geography. Subsection. Location and borders. The vast majority of France's territory and population is situated in Western Europe and is called Metropolitan France to distinguish it from the country's various overseas polities. It is bordered by the North Sea in the north, the English Channel in the northwest, the Atlantic Ocean in the west, and the Mediterranean Sea in the southeast. Its land borders consist of Belgium and Luxembourg in the northeast, Germany and Switzerland in the east, Italy and Monaco in the southeast, and Andorra and Spain in the south and southwest. Except for the northeast, most of France's land borders are roughly delineated by natural boundaries and geographic features. To the south and southeast, the Pyrenees and the Alps, and the Jura, respectively, and to the east, the Rhine River. Due to its shape, French is often referred to as l'hexagon, the hexagon. Metropolitan France includes various coastal islands, of which the largest is Corsica. Metropolitan France is mostly between latitudes 41 and 51 degrees north, and longitudes 6 degrees west and 10 degrees east. It is on the western edge of Europe, and thus lies within the northern temperate zone. Its continental part covers about 1,000 kilometers from north to south and from east to west. France has several overseas regions across the world, which are organized as follows. Five have the same status as mainland France's regions and departments. These are French Guiana in South America, Guadeloupe in the Caribbean, Martinique in the Caribbean, Mayotte in the Indian Ocean off the coast of East Africa, and Réunion in the Indian Ocean off the coast of East Africa. Nine have special legal status, distinct from mainland France's regions and departments. These are, in the Atlantic Ocean, Saint-Pierre and Miquelon, and in the Antilles, Saint-Martin and Saint-Barthélemy. In the Pacific Ocean, French Polynesia, the special collectivity of New Caledonia, Wallace and Futuna, and Clipperton Island. In the Indian Ocean, the Kerguelen Islands, Crozet Islands, St. Paul, and Amsterdam Islands, and the scattered islands in the Indian Ocean, and in the Antarctic, Adelie Land. France has land borders with Brazil and Suriname via French Guiana, and with the Kingdom of the Netherlands through the French portion of St. Martin. Metropolitan France covers 551,500 square kilometers, the largest among European Union members. France's total land area, with its overseas departments and territories, excluding Adelie land, is 643 801 square kilometers, or 0.45% of the total land area on Earth. France possesses a wide variety of landscapes, from coastal plains in the north and west to mountain ranges of the Alps in the southeast, the Massif Central in the south central, and Pyrenees in the southwest. Due to its numerous overseas departments and territories scattered across the planet, France possesses the second largest exclusive economic zone, or EEZ, in the world, covering 11,035,000 square kilometers, just behind the EEZ of the United States, which covers 11,351,000 square kilometers, but ahead of the EEZ of Australia, which covers 8,148,250 square kilometers. 
Francis EEZ covers approximately 8% of the total surface of all of the EEZs of the world. Subheading, geology, topography, and hydrography. Metropolitan France has a wide variety of topographical sets and natural landscapes. Large parts of the current territory of France were raised during several tectonic episodes, like the Hercynian uplift in the Paleozoic era, during which the Armorican Massif, the Massif Central, the Morvan, the Vosges, and the Ardennes ranges, and the island of Corsica were formed. These massifs delineate several sedimentary basins, such as the Aquitaine Basin in the southwest and the Paris Basin in the north, the latter including several areas of particularly fertile ground, such as the silt beds of Beauce and Brie. Various routes of natural passage, such as the Rhone Valley, allow easy communication. The Alpine, Pyrenean, and Jura Mountains are much younger and have less eroded forms. At 4,810.45 meters above sea level, Mont Blanc, located in the Alps on the French and Italian border, is the highest point in Western Europe. Although 60% of municipalities are classified as having seismic risks, these risks remain moderate. The coastlines offer contrasting landscapes, mountain ranges along the French Riviera, coastal cliffs such as the Côte d'Albatre, and wide sandy plains in the Languedoc. Corsica lies off the Mediterranean coast. France has an extensive river system consisting of the four major rivers, the Seine, the Loire, the Garonne, and the Rhône, and their tributaries, whose combined catchment includes over 62% of the metropolitan territory. The Rhône divides the Massif Central from the Alps and flows into the Mediterranean Sea at the Camargue. The Garonne meets the Dordogne just after Bordeaux, forming the Gironde Estuary, the largest estuary in Western Europe, which, after approximately 100 kilometers, empties into the Atlantic Ocean. Other watercourses drain toward the Meuse and Rhine along the northeastern borders. France has 11 million square kilometers of marine waters within three oceans under its jurisdiction, of which 90% are overseas. Subheading, environment. France was one of the first countries to create an environment ministry in 1971. Although it is one of the most industrialized countries in the world, France is ranked only 19th by carbon dioxide emissions, behind less populous nations such as Canada or Australia. This is due to the country's heavy investment in nuclear power following the 1973 oil crisis, which now accounts for 75% of its electricity production and results in less pollution. According to the 2020 Environmental Performance Index, conducted by Yale and Columbia, France was the fifth most environmentally conscious country in the world, behind the United Kingdom. Like all European Union state members, France agreed to cut carbon emissions by at least 20% of 1990 levels by 2020, compared to the United States' plan to reduce emissions by 4% of 1990 levels. As of 2009, French carbon dioxide emissions per capita were lower than that of China. The country was set to impose a carbon tax in 2019 at 17 euros per ton of carbon emitted, which would have raised 4 billion euros of revenue annually. However, the plan was abandoned due to fears of burdening French businesses. Forests account for 31% of France's land area, the fourth highest proportion in Europe, representing an increase of 7% since 1990. French forests are some of the most diverse in Europe, comprising more than 140 species of trees. France had a 2018 Forest Landscape Integrity Index mean score of 4.52 out of 10, ranking at 123rd globally out of 172 countries. There are nine national parks and 46 natural parks in France, with the government planning to convert 20% of its exclusive economic zone into a marine protected area by 2020. A regional nature park, French Parc Naturel Régional, or PNR, is a public establishment in France between local authorities and the national government, covering an inhabited rural area of outstanding beauty to protect the scenery and heritage as well as setting up sustainable economic development in the area. 
A Péanard sets goals and guidelines for managed human habitation, sustainable economic development, and protection of the natural environment based on each park's unique landscape and heritage. The parks foster ecological research programs and public education in the natural sciences. As of 2019, there are 54 Péanard in France. Subheading, Administrative Divisions. The French Republic is divided into 18 regions, located in Europe and overseas, five overseas collectivities, one overseas territory, one special collectivity, New Caledonia, and one uninhabited island directly under the authority of the Minister of Overseas France, Clipperton. Subheading, Regions. Since 2016, France is divided into 18 administrative regions, 13 regions in metropolitan France, including Corsica, and five overseas. The regions are further subdivided into 101 departments, which are numbered mainly alphabetically. The department number is used in postal codes and was formerly used on vehicle registration plates. Among the 101 French departments, five, French Guiana, Guadeloupe, Martinique, Mayotte, and Réunion are in the Overseas Regions, or ROMs, that are simultaneously Overseas Departments, DOMs, enjoying the same status as Metropolitan Departments and are thereby included in the European Union. The 101 departments are subdivided into 335 arrondissements, which are, in turn, subdivided into 2,054 cantons. These cantons are then divided into 36,658 communes, which are municipalities with an elected municipal council. Three communes, Paris, Lyon, and Marseille, are subdivided into 45 municipal arrondissements. The regions, departments, and communes are all known as territorial collectivities, meaning they possess local assemblies as well as an executive. Today, arrondissements and cantons are merely administrative divisions. However, this was not always the case. Until 1940, the arrondissements were territorial collectivities with an elected assembly, but these were suspended by the Vichy regime and abolished by the Fourth Republic in 1946. Subheading, Overseas Territories and Collectivities in addition to the 18 regions and 101 departments, the French Republic has five overseas collectivities. French Polynesia, saint Barthélemy, saint Martin, Saint-Pierre and Miquelon, and Wallace and Fortuna, one sui generis collectivity, New Caledonia, one overseas territory, French Southern and Antarctic lands, and one island possession in the Pacific Ocean, Clipperton Island. Overseas collectivities and territories form part of the French Republic, but do not form part of the European Union or its fiscal area, except for saint Barthélemy, which seceded from Guadeloupe in 2007. The Pacific collectivities, or COMs, of French Polynesia, Wallace and Fortuna, and New Caledonia continue to use the CFP franc, whose value is strictly linked to that of the euro. In contrast, the five overseas regions use the French franc and now use the euro. Section 4. Government and Politics. Subheading. Government. France is a representative democracy, organized as a unitary, semi-presidential republic. As one of the earliest republics of the modern world, democratic traditions and values are deeply rooted in French culture, identity, and politics. The Constitution of the Fifth Republic was approved by referendum on 28 September 1958, establishing a framework consisting of executive, legislative, and judicial branches. It sought to address the instability of the Third and Fourth Republics by combining the elements of both parliamentary and presidential systems, while greatly strengthening the authority of the executive relative to the legislature. The executive has two leaders. The President of the Republic, currently Emmanuel Macron, is the head of state, elected directly by universal adult suffrage for a five-year term. The Prime Minister, currently Elizabeth Bourne, is the head of government, appointed by the President to lead the government. The President has the power to dissolve Parliament or circumvent it by submitting referendums directly to the people. The President also appoints judges and civil servants, negotiates and ratifies international agreements, 
as well as serves as Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. The Prime Minister determines public policy and oversees the civil service with an emphasis on domestic matters. In the 2022 presidential election, President Macron was re-elected. The legislature consists of the French Parliament, a bicameral body made up of a lower house, the National Assembly, Assemblée Nationale, and an upper house, the Senate. Legislators and the National Assembly, known as députés, represent local constituencies and are directly elected for five-year terms. The Assembly has the power to dismiss the government by majority vote. Senators are chosen by an electoral college for six-year terms, with half the seats submitted to election every three years. The Senate's legislative powers are limited. In the event of disagreement between the two chambers, the National Assembly has the final say. The Parliament is responsible for determining the rules and principles concerning most areas of law, political amnesty, and fiscal policy. However, the government may draft specific details concerning most laws. Until World War II, radicals were a strong political force in France, embodied by the Republican, Radical, and Radical Socialist Party, which was the most important party of the Third Republic. From World War II until 2017, French politics was dominated by two politically opposed groupings. One left wing, the French section of the Workers' International, which was succeeded by the Socialist Party in 1969, and the other right wing, the Gaullist Party, whose name changed over time to the Rally of the French People, 1947, the Union of Democrats for the Republics, 1958, the Rally for the Republic, 1976, the Union for a Popular Movement, 2007, and the Republicans, since 2015. In the 2017 presidential and legislative elections, the radical centrist party, La République en Marche, L-R-E-M, became the dominant force, overtaking both socialists and republicans. L-R-E-M's opponent in the second round of the 2017 and 2022 presidential elections was the growing far-right party, National Rally. Since 2020, Europe Ecology, the Greens, have performed well in mayoral elections in major cities, while in a national level, an alliance of left parties, the Nouvelle Union Populaire Écologique et Sociale, NUPES, or in English, the New Ecological and Social People's Union, was the second largest voting bloc elected to the lower house in 2022. The electorate is constitutionally empowered to vote on amendments passed by the parliament and bills submitted by the president. Referendums have played a key role in shaping French politics and even foreign policy. Voters have decided on such matters as Algeria's independence, the election of the president by popular vote, the formation of the EU, and the reduction of presidential term limits. Waning civic participation has been a matter of vigorous public debate, with a majority of the public reportedly supporting mandatory voting as a solution in 2019. Subheading. Law. France uses a civil legal system, wherein law arises primarily from written statutes. Judges are not to make law, but merely to interpret it, although the amount of judicial interpretation in certain areas makes it equivalent to case law in a common law system. Basic principles of the rule of law were laid in the Napoleonic Code, which was, in turn, largely based on the royal law codified under Louis XIV. In agreement with the principles of the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, the law should only prohibit actions detrimental to society. As Guy Canivet, the first president of the Court of Cassation, which is the highest court for all civil and criminal matters in the French judicial system, wrote about the management of prisons, open quote, Freedom is the rule, and its restriction is the exception. Any restriction of freedom must be provided for by law and must follow the principles of necessity and proportionality, close quote. That is, law should lay out prohibitions only if they are needed, and if the inconveniences caused by this restriction do not exceed the inconveniences that the prohibition is supposed to remedy. French law is divided into two principal areas, private law and public law. Private law includes, in particular, civil law and criminal law, Public law includes, in particular, administrative law and constitutional law. 
However, in practical terms, French law comprises three principal areas of law, civil law, criminal law, and administrative law. Criminal laws can only address the future and not the past. Criminal ex post facto laws are prohibited. While administrative law is often a subcategory of civil law in many countries, it is completely separated in France and each body of law is headed by a specific Supreme Court. Ordinary courts, which handle criminal and civil litigation, are headed by the Court of Cassation. Administrative courts are headed by the Council of State. To be applicable, every law must be officially published in the Journal Officiel de la République Française. France does not recognize religious law as a motivation for the enactment of prohibitions. It has long abolished blasphemy laws and sodomy laws, the latter in 1791. However, offenses against public decency, contraire à bon mur, or disturbing public order, trouble à l'ordre public, have been used to repress public expressions of homosexuality or street prostitution. Since 1999, civil unions for homosexual couples are permitted, and since 2013, same-sex marriage and LGBT adoption are legal. Laws prohibiting discriminatory speech in the press are as old as 1881. Some consider hate speech laws in France to be too broad or severe, undermining freedom of speech. France has laws against racism and anti-Semitism, while the 1990 Gesso Act prohibits Holocaust denial. Freedom of religion is constitutionally guaranteed by the 1789 Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen. The 1905 French law on the separation of the churches and the state is the basis for laïcité, or state secularism. The state does not formally recognize any religion except in Alsace-Moselle, which was part of Germany in 1905 and continues to subsidize education and clergy of Catholicism, Lutheranism, Calvinism, and Judaism. Nonetheless, France does recognize religious associations. The parliament has listed many religious movements as dangerous cults since 1995 and has banned wearing conspicuous religious symbols in school since 2004. In 2010, it banned the wearing of face-covering Islamic veils in public, Human rights groups such as Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch describe the law as discriminatory towards Muslims. However, it is supported by most of the population. Subheading, Foreign Relations. France is a founding member of the United Nations and serves as one of the permanent members of the UN Security Council with veto rights. In 2015, it was described as, quote, the best networked state in the world, close quote, due to its membership in more international institutions than any other country. These include the G7, World Trade Organization, the Pacific Community, or SPC, and the Indian Ocean Commission, or COI. It is an associate member of the Association of Caribbean States, or ACS, and a leading member of the Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie, OIF of 84 French-speaking countries. As a significant hub for international relations, France has the third largest assembly of diplomatic missions, second only to China and the United States, which are far more populous. It also hosts the headquarters of several international organizations, including the OECD, UNESCO, Interpol, the International Bureau of Weights and Measures, and the OIF. French foreign policy after World War II has been largely shaped by membership in the European Union, of which it is a founding member. Since the 1960s, France has developed close ties with reunified Germany to become the most influential driving force of the EU. In the 1960s, France sought to exclude the British from European unification process, seeking to build its standing in continental Europe. However, since 1904, France has maintained an entente cordiale with the United Kingdom, and there has been a strengthening of links between the countries, especially militarily. France is a member of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, but under President de Gaulle excluded itself from the Joint Military Command in protest of the special relationship between the United States and Britain, and to preserve the independence of French foreign and security policies. Under Nicolas Sarkozy, France rejoined the NATO Joint Military Command on 4 April 2009. 
France retains strong cultural and political influence in its former African colonies, France Afrique, and has supplied economic aid and troops for peacekeeping missions in Ivory Coast and Chad. From 2012 to 2021, France and other African states intervened in support of the Malian government in the Northern Mali conflict. In 2017, France was the world's fourth largest donor of development aid in absolute terms, behind the United States, Germany, and the United Kingdom. This represents 0.43% of its gross national product, the 12th highest among the OECD. Aid is provided by the governmental French Development Agency, which finances primarily humanitarian projects in sub-Saharan Africa, with an emphasis on, quote, developing infrastructure, access to health care and education, the implementation of appropriate economic policies, and the consolidation of the rule of law and democracy, close quote. Subheading, military. The French armed forces, forces armées françaises, are the military and paramilitary forces of France, under the President of the Republic as Supreme Commander. They consist of the French Army, Armée de Terre, the French Navy, Marine Nationale, formerly called Armée de Mer, the French Air and Space Force, Armée de l'Air et de l'Espace, and the Military Police, called National Gendarmerie, Gendarmerie Nationale, which also fulfills civil police duties in the rural areas of France. Together, they are among the largest armed forces in the world and the largest in the EU. According to a 2018 study by Credit Suisse, the French armed forces are ranked as the world's sixth most powerful military and the second most powerful in Europe after Russia. France's annual military expenditure in 2018 was 63.8 billion US dollars, or 2.3% of its gross domestic product, making it the fifth biggest military spender in the world after the United States, China, Saudi Arabia, and India. There has been no national conscription since 1997. France has been a recognized nuclear state since 1960. France has signed and ratified the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, the CTBT, and acceded to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. The French nuclear force, formerly known as Force de Frappe, consists of four Triomphant-class submarines equipped with submarine-launched ballistic missiles. In addition to the submarine fleet, it is estimated that France has about 60 ASMP medium-range air-to-ground missiles with nuclear warheads, of which around 50 are deployed by the Air and Space Force using the Mirage 2000N long-range nuclear strike aircraft while around 10 are deployed by the French Navy's Super Etendard Modernisé, SEM, attack aircraft, which operate from the nuclear-powered aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle. The new Rafael F-3 aircraft will gradually replace all Mirage 2000N and SEM in the nuclear strike role with the improved ASMPA missile with the nuclear warhead. France has major military industries with one of the largest aerospace industries in the world. Its industries have produced such equipment as the Rafale fighter, the Charles de Gaulle aircraft carrier, the Exocet missile, and the Leclerc tank, among others. France is actively investing in European joint projects such as the Eurocopter Tiger, multi-purpose frigates, the UCAV demonstrator Neuron, and the Airbus a400M. France is a major arms seller, with most of its arsenal's designs available for the export market, except for the nuclear-powered devices. One French intelligence unit, the Directorate General for External Security, Direction Générale de la Sécurité Extérieure, is considered to be a component of the armed forces under the authority of the Ministry of Defense. The other, the Central Directorate for Interior Intelligence, Direction Centrale du Renseignement Intérieur, is a division of the National Police Force, Direction Générale de la Police Nationale. France's cybersecurity capabilities are regularly ranked as some of the most robust of any nation in the world. Subheading, Government Finance. The government of France has run a budget deficit each year since the early 1970s. 
As of 2016, French government debt levels reached 2.2 trillion euros, the equivalent of 96.4% of French GDP. In late 2012, credit rating agencies warned that the growing French government debt levels risked France's AAA credit rating, raising the possibility of a future downgrade and subsequent higher borrowing costs for the French authorities. However, in July 2020, during the COVID-19 pandemic, the French government issued negative interest rate 10-year bonds for the first time in its history. In 2020, France possessed the fourth largest gold reserves in the world. Section 5, Economy. Subheading, Overview. France has a developed high-income mixed economy characterized by sizable government involvement, economic diversity, a skilled labor force, and high innovation. For roughly two centuries, the French economy has consistently ranked among the ten largest globally. It is currently the world's ninth largest by purchasing power parity, the seventh largest by nominal GDP, and the second largest in the European Union by both metrics. France is considered an economic power, with membership in the group of seven leading industrialized countries, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, and the group of 20 largest economies. France's economy is highly diversified. Services represent two-thirds of both the workforce and GDP, while the industrial sector accounts for a fifth of GDP and a similar proportion of employment. France is the third biggest manufacturing country in Europe, behind Germany and Italy, and ranks eighth in the world by share of global manufacturing output at 1.9%. Less than 2% of GDP is generated by the primary sector, namely agriculture. However, France's agricultural sector is among the largest in value and leads the EU in terms of overall production. In 2018, France was the fifth largest trading nation in the world and the second largest in Europe, with the value of exports representing over a fifth of GDP. Its membership in the Eurozone and the broader European single market facilitates access to capital, goods, services, and skilled labor. Despite protectionist policies over certain industry, particularly agriculture, France has generally played a leading role in fostering free trade and commercial integration in Europe to enhance its economy. In 2019, it ranked first in Europe and 13th in the world in foreign direct investment with European countries and the United States being leading sources. According to the Bank of France, the leading recipients of FDI were manufacturing, real estate, finance, and insurance. The Paris region has the highest concentration of multinational firms in Europe. Under the doctrine of dirigisme, the government historically played a major role in the economy, Policies such as indicative planning and nationalization are credited for contributing to three decades of unprecedented post-war economic growth, known as the Trent Glorieuse. At its peak in 1982, the public sector accounted for one-fifth of industrial employment and over four-fifths of the credit market. Beginning in the late 20th century, France loosened regulations and state involvement in the economy, with most leading companies now being privately owned. State ownership now dominates only transportation, defense, and broadcasting. Policies aimed at promoting economic dynamism and privatization have improved France's economic standing globally. It is among the world's 10 most innovative countries in the 2020 Bloomberg Innovation Index and the 15th most competitive, according to the 2019 Global Competitiveness Report, up two places from 2018. According to the IMF, France ranked 30th in GDP per capita, with roughly 45,000 U.S. dollars per inhabitant. It placed 23rd on the Human Development Index, indicating very high human development. Public corruption is among the lowest in the world, with France consistently ranking among the 30 least corrupt countries since the Corruption Perceptions Index began in 2012. France placed 22nd in 2021, up one place from the previous year. France is Europe's second largest spender in research and development, at over 2% of GDP. Globally, it ranks 12th. Financial services, banking, and insurance are important parts of the economy. AXA is the world's second largest insurance company by total non-banking assets in 2020. 
As of 2011, the three largest financial institutions cooperatively owned by their customers were French, Credit Agricole, Groupe Caisse d'Epargne, and Credit Mutuel. According to a 2020 report by S&P Global Market Intelligence, France's leading banks, BNP Paribas and Credit Agricole, are among the world's 10 largest banks by assets, with Société Générale and Groupe BPCE ranking 17th and 19th globally, respectively. The Paris Stock Exchange, La Bourse de Paris, is one of the oldest in the world, created by Louis XV in 1724. In 2000, it merged with counterparts in Amsterdam and Brussels to form Euronext, which in 2007 merged with the New York Stock Exchange to form NYSE Euronext, the world's largest stock exchange. Euronext Paris, the French branch of the NYSE Euronext, is Europe's second largest stock exchange market behind the London Stock Exchange. Subheading, Agriculture. France has historically been one of the world's major agricultural centers and remains a global agricultural powerhouse. Named the Granary of the Old Continent, over half its total land area is farmland, of which 45% is devoted to permanent field crops such as cereals. The country's diverse climate, extensive arable land, modern farming technology, and EU subsidies have made it Europe's leading agricultural producer and exporter. It accounts for one-fifth of the EU's agricultural production, including over one-third of its oil seeds, cereals, and wine. As of 2017, France ranked first in Europe in beef and cereals, second in dairy and aquaculture, and third in poultry, fruits, vegetables, and manufactured chocolate products. France has the EU's largest cattle herd at 18 to 19 million. France is the world's sixth biggest exporter of agricultural products, generating a trade surplus of over 7.4 billion euros. Its primary agricultural exports are wheat, poultry, dairy, beef, pork, and internationally recognized brands, particularly beverages. France is the fifth largest grower of wheat after China, India, Russia, and the United States, all of which are significantly larger. It is the world's top exporter of natural spring water, flax, malt, and potatoes. In 2020, France exported over 61 billion euros in agricultural products, compared to 37 billion euros in 2000. France was an early center of viticulture, dating back to at least the 6th century BCE. It is the world's second largest producer of wine, with many varieties enjoying global renown, such as Champagne and Bordeaux. Domestic consumption is also high, particularly of rosé. France produces rum, primarily from overseas territories such as Martinique, Guadeloupe, and La Réunion. Relative to other developed countries, agriculture is an important sector of France's economy. 3.8% of the active population is employed in agriculture whereas the total agri-food industry is made up of 4.2% of the French GDP in 2005. France remains the largest recipient of EU agricultural subsidies, receiving an annual average of 8 billion euros from 2007 to 2019. Subheading, Tourism. With 89 million international tourist arrivals in 2018, France is the world's top tourist destination, ahead of Spain, at 83 million, and the United States at 80 million. However, it ranks third in tourism-derived income due to the shorter duration of visits. The most popular tourist sites include, in terms of annual visitors, the Eiffel Tower, 6.2 million, the Chateau de Versailles, 2.8 million, Museum National de Histoire Naturelle, 2 million, Pont du Gard, 1.5 million, Arc de Triomphe, 1.2 million, Mont Saint Michel, 1 million, Saint Chapelle, 683,000, Château du Haut Königsberg, 549,000, Puy de Dôme, 500,000, Musée Picasso, 441,000, and Carcassonne, 362,000. France, especially Paris, has some of the world's largest and most renowned museums, including the Louvre which is the most visited art museum in the world, 7.7 million visitors in 2022, 
Musée d'Arsay, 3.3 million, which is mostly devoted to Impressionism. The Musée de l'Orangerie, 1 million, which is home to eight large water lily murals by Claude Monet, as well as the Centre Georges Pompidou, 3 million visitors, dedicated to contemporary art. Disneyland Paris is Europe's most popular theme park, with 15 million combined visitors to the resort's Disneyland Park and Walt Disney Studios Park in 2009. With more than 10 million visits a year, the French Riviera, in French the Côte d'Azur, in southeast France, is the second leading tourist destination in the country, after the Paris region. It benefits from 300 days of sunshine per year, 115 kilometers of coastline and beaches, 18 golf courses, 14 ski resorts, and 3,000 restaurants. Each year, the Côte d'Azur hosts 50% of the world's superyacht fleet. With 6 million tourists a year, the Loire Valley, including its castles, or in French, chateaux, are the third leading tourist destination in France. This World Heritage Site is noteworthy for its architectural heritage, its historic towns, and in particular its castles, such as the Château d'Amboise, de Chambord, de Vissé, de Villandry, de Nonceau, and Montsoreau. The Château de Chantilly, Versailles, and vaux le vicomte all three located near Paris, are also visitor attractions. France has 37 sites inscribed in UNESCO's World Heritage List and features cities of high cultural interest, beaches and seaside resorts, ski resorts, as well as rural regions that many enjoy for their beauty and tranquility. Small and picturesque French villages are promoted through the association Les Plus Beaux Villages de France, literally, the most beautiful villages of France, the Remarkable Gardens label is a list of over 200 gardens classified by the Ministry of Culture. This label is intended to protect and promote remarkable gardens and parks. France attracts many religious pilgrims on their way to St. James or to Lourdes, a town in the Haute Pyrenees that hosts several million visitors a year. Subheading, energy. France is the world's 10th largest producer of electricity. Electricité de France, EDF, which is majority owned by the French government, is the country's main producer and distributor of electricity and one of the world's largest electric utility companies, ranking third in revenue globally. In 2018, EDF produced around one-fifth of the European Union's electricity, primarily from nuclear power. As of 2021, France was the biggest energy exporter in Europe, mostly to the UK and Italy, and the largest net exporter of electricity in the world. Since the 1973 oil crisis, France has pursued a strong policy of energy security, namely through heavy investment in nuclear energy. It is one of 32 countries with nuclear power plants, ranking second in the world by the number of operational nuclear reactors at 56. Consequently, 70% of France's electricity is generated by nuclear power, the highest proportion in the world by a wide margin. Only Slovakia and Ukraine derive a majority of electricity from nuclear power, at roughly 53 and 51 percent, respectively. France is considered a world leader in nuclear technology, with reactors and fuel products being major exports. Due to its overwhelming reliance on nuclear power, renewable energies have seen relatively little growth compared to other Western countries. Nevertheless, between 2018 and 2019, France's production capacity from renewable energies rose consistently and nearly doubled. Hydropower is by far the leading source, accounting for over half the country's renewable energy sources and contributing 13% of its electricity, the highest proportion in Europe, after Norway and Turkey. As with nuclear power, most hydroelectric plants, such as Eguzon, Etang de Sulsem, and Lac de Vouglin are managed by EDF. France aims to further expand hydropower into 2040. France made minimal but measurable investments in other renewable energy sources. Due to its geography and extensive agricultural land, it has the second largest wind energy potential in Europe, and by 2017 had ranked eighth globally in installed wind capacity. In terms of solar power, France ranked 7th in the world in 2015 for solar photovoltaic installation capacity. As of 2019, solar power sources generated over 10,570 megawatts of electricity, 
compared to a little over 1,000 megawatts in 2010. Because France derives the vast majority of its power from nuclear and renewable sources, close to half its primary energy, 48.5%, is derived from low carbon sources, compared to 26.4% in Europe and 15.7% in the world as a whole. France is also the smallest emitter of carbon dioxide among the G7. Subheading, transport. France's railway network, which stretches 29,473 kilometers as of 2008, is the second most extensive in Western Europe after Germany. It is operated by SNCF with high-speed trains, including the TAS, the Eurostar, and TGV, which travels at 320 kilometers per hour. The Eurostar, along with the Eurotunnel shuttle, connects with the United Kingdom through the Channel Tunnel. Rail connections exist to all other neighboring countries in Europe except Andorra. Intra-urban connections are also well developed, with most major cities having underground or tramway services complementing bus services. There are approximately 1,027,183 kilometers of serviceable roadway in France, ranking it the most extensive network of the European continent. The Paris region is enveloped with the densest network of roads and highways, which connect it with virtually all parts of the country. French roads also handle substantial international traffic, connecting with cities in neighboring Belgium, Luxembourg, Germany, Switzerland, Italy, Spain, Andorra, and Monaco. There's no annual registration fee or road tax. However, usage of the mostly privately owned motorways is through tolls, except in the vicinity of large communes. The new car market is dominated by domestic brands such as Renault, Peugeot, and Citroën. France possesses the Milau Viaduct, the world's tallest bridge, and has built many important bridges such as the Pont de Normandie. Diesel and gasoline-fueled cars and lorries cause a large part of the country's air pollution and greenhouse gas emissions. There are 464 airports in France. Charles de Gaulle Airport, located in the vicinity of Paris, is the largest and busiest airport in the country, handling the vast majority of popular and commercial traffic and connecting Paris with virtually all major cities across the world. Air France is the national carrier airline, although numerous private airline companies provide domestic and international travel services. There are 10 major ports in France, the largest of which is in Marseille, which also is the largest bordering the Mediterranean Sea. 12,261 kilometers of waterways traverse France, including the Canal du Midi, which connects the Mediterranean Sea to the Atlantic Ocean through the Garonne River. Subheading, Science and Technology. Since the Middle Ages, France has been a major contributor to scientific and technological achievement. In the early 11th century, the French-born Pope Sylvester II reintroduced the abacus and the armillary sphere and introduced Arabic numerals in clocks to much of Europe. The University of Paris, founded in the mid-12th century, is still one of the most important academic institutions in the Western world. In the 17th century, mathematician and philosopher René Descartes pioneered rationalism as a method for acquiring scientific knowledge, while Blaise Pascal became famous for his work on probability and fluid mechanics. Both were key figures of the scientific revolution, which blossomed in Europe during this period. The French Academy of Sciences, founded in the mid-17th century by Louis XIV to encourage and protect French scientific research, was one of the earliest national scientific institutions in history. It was at the forefront of scientific developments in Europe for the next two centuries. The Age of Enlightenment was marked by the work of biologist Buffon, one of the first naturalists to recognize ecological succession, and chemist Lavoisier, who discovered the role of oxygen in combustion. Diderot and d'Alembert published the Encyclopédie, which aimed to give the public access to useful knowledge that could be applied to everyday life. The Industrial Revolution of the 19th century saw spectacular scientific developments in France, with Augustin Fresnel, founding modern optics, Sadi Carnot, laying the foundations of thermodynamics, and Louis Pasteur, pioneering microbiology. Other eminent French scientists of the period have their names inscribed on the Eiffel Tower. 
Famous French scientists of the 20th century include the mathematician and physicist Henri Poincaré, physicist Henri Becquerel, Pierre and Marie Curie, who remain famous for their work on radioactivity, physicist Paul Lagavin, and virologist Luc Montagnier, co-discoverer of HIV-AIDS. Hand transplantation was developed in Lyon in 1998 by an international team that included Jean-Michel Dubernard, who afterward performed the first successful double hand transplant. Telesurgery was first performed by French surgeons led by Jacques Maresco on 7 September 2001 across the Atlantic Ocean. A face transplant was first done on 27 November by Dr. Bernard de Vauchel. France was the fourth country to achieve nuclear capability and has the third largest nuclear weapons arsenal in the world. It is also a leader in civilian nuclear technology. France was the third nation, after the Soviet Union and the United States, to launch its space satellite, and the first to establish a commercial launch service provider, Ariane Space. The French National Space Program, CNAS, is the third oldest in the world, and the oldest, largest, and most active in Europe. France is a founding member of the European Space Agency, or ESA, contributing over a quarter of its budget, the most of any member state. ESA is headquartered in Paris, has its principal spaceport in French Guiana, and utilizes the French-made Ariane 5 as its primary launch vehicle. Airbus, a leading aerospace company and the world's largest airline manufacturer, was formed partly from the French company Aerospecial. Its main commercial airline business is conducted through its French division, Airbus SAS. France also hosts major international research facilities, including the European Synchrotron Radiation Facility, the Institut La Langevin, and Minatec, Europe's leading nanotechnology research center. It is also a major member of CERN, which operates the largest particle physics laboratory in the world and is its third largest contributor. France pioneered and hosts ITER, an international effort to develop nuclear fusion energy, which is the world's biggest megaproject. The TGV, developed by France's national railway company, the SNCF, is a high-speed train that holds a series of world speed records. In 2007, it became the fastest commercial wheeled train, achieving a speed of 574.8 kilometers per hour. As of 2021, it is the third fastest train in the world, surpassed only by maglev models that utilize magnetic levitation. Western Europe is now serviced by a network of TGV lines. The Centre National de la Recherche Scientifique, CNRS, the state research agency, is the largest research institute in Europe and among the most prominent internationally. According to the 2020 Nature Index, it ranks fourth in the share of articles published in scientific journals worldwide, with France as a whole having the sixth highest share. As of 2022, France ranks fourth in the number of Nobel laureates, with 70 French people having been awarded a Nobel Prize. Twelve French mathematicians have received a Fields Medal, considered the most prestigious award in the field, making up one-fifth of total recipients, second only to the United States. France ranked 12th in the 2020 Global Innovation Index compared to 12th in 2020 and 16th in 2019. Section 6 demographics. With an estimated January 2023 population of 68,042,591 people, France is the 20th most populous country in the world, the third most populous in Europe after Russia and Germany, and the second most populous in the European Union after Germany. France is an outlier among developed countries, particularly in Europe, for its relatively high rate of natural population growth. By birth rates alone, it was responsible for almost all natural population growth in the European Union in 2016. Between 2006 and 2016, France saw the second highest overall increase in population in the EU and was only one of four EU countries where natural births accounted for the most population growth. This was the highest rate since the end of the baby boom in 1973 and coincides with the rise of the total fertility rate from a nadir of about 1.7 in 1994 to 2.0 in 2010. 
As of January 2021, the fertility rate declined slightly to 1.84 children per woman, below the replacement rate of 2.1 and considerably below the high of 4.41 in 1800. France's fertility rate and crude birth rate nonetheless remain among the highest in the EU. However, like many developed nations, the French population is aging. The average age is 41.7 years, while about a fifth of French people are 65 or over. The average life expectancy at birth is 82.7 years, the 12th highest in the world. From 2006 to 2011, population growth averaged 0.6% per year. Since 2011, annual growth has been between 0.4 and 0.5% annually. Immigrants are major contributors to this trend. In 2010, 27% of newborns in metropolitan France had at least one foreign-born parent, and another 24% had at least one parent born outside Europe, excluding French overseas territories. Subheading ethnic groups. Historically, French people were mainly of Celtic Gallic origin, with a significant admixture of Italic, Romans, and Germanic, Franks, groups reflecting centuries of respective migration and settlement. Through the course of the Middle Ages, France incorporated various neighboring ethnic and linguistic groups, as evidenced by Breton elements in the West, Aquitanian in the Southwest, Scandinavian in the Northwest, Alemannic in the Northeast, and the Gurian in the southeast. Large-scale immigration over the last century and a half have led to a more multicultural society. Beginning with the French Revolution, and further codified by the French Constitution of 1958, the government is prohibited from collecting data on ethnicity and ancestry. Most demographic information is drawn from private sector organizations or academic institutions. In 2004, the Institut Montaigne estimated that within metropolitan France, 51 million people were white, 85% of the population, 6 million were Northwest African, 10%, 2 million were black, 3.3%, and 1 million were Asian, 1.7%. A 2008 poll conducted jointly by the Institut National d'Etudes Démographiques and the French National Institute of Statistics estimated that the largest ancestry groups were Italian, 5 million, followed by Northwest African, 3 to 6 million, Sub-Saharan African, 2.5 million, Armenian, 500,000, and Turkish, 200,000. There are also sizable minorities of other European ethnic groups, namely Spanish, Portuguese, Polish, and Greek. France has a significant Gitan, or Romani, population numbering between 20,000 and 400,000. Many foreign Roma are expelled back to Bulgaria and Romania frequently. Subheading, immigration. It is currently estimated that 40% of the French population is descended at least partially from the different waves of immigration since the early 20th century. Between 1921 and 1935 alone, about 1.1 million net immigrants came to France. The next largest wave came in the 1960s when around 1.6 million Pieds Noirs returned to France following the independence of its Northwest African possessions, Algeria and Morocco. They were joined by numerous former colonial subjects from North and West Africa, as well as numerous European immigrants from Spain and Portugal. France remains a major destination for immigrants, accepting about 200,000 legal immigrants annually. In 2005, it was Western Europe's leading recipient of asylum seekers, with an estimated 50,000 applications, albeit a 15% decrease from 2004. In 2010, France received about 48,100 asylum applications, placing it among the top five asylum recipients in the world, and in subsequent years it saw the number of applications increase, ultimately doubling to a 100,412 in 2017. The European Union allows free movement between member states, although France established controls to curb Eastern European migration and immigration remains a contentious political issue. In 2008, the INSEE, the National Institution of Statistics and Economic Studies, estimated that the total number of foreign-born immigrants was around 5 million, or 8% of the population, while their French-born descendants numbered 6.5 million, or 11% of the population. Thus, nearly a fifth of the country's population were either first- or second-generation immigrants, of which more than 5 million were of European origin and 4 million of Maghrebi ancestry. 
In 2008, France granted citizenship to 137,000 persons, mostly from Morocco, Algeria, and Turkey. In 2014, the INSEE reported a significant increase in the number of immigrants coming from Spain, Portugal, and Italy between 2009 and 2012. According to the French Institute, this increase resulted from the financial crisis that hit several European countries in that period. Statistics on Spanish immigrants to France show a growth of 107 percent between 2009 and 2012, with the population growing from 5,300 to 11,000. Of the total 229,000 foreigners who were in France in 2012, nearly 8 percent were Portuguese, 5 percent British, 5 percent Spanish, 4 percent Italian, 4 percent German, 3 percent Romanian, and 3 percent Belgian. Subsection Major Cities France is a highly urbanized country with its largest cities, in terms of metropolitan area population in 2019, being Paris, 13 million inhabitants, Lyon, 2.2 million, Marseille, 1.8 million, Lille, 1.5 million, Toulouse, 1.4 million, Bordeaux, 1.4 million, Nantes, 1 million, Strasbourg, 850,000, Montpellier, 800,000, and Rennes. 756,000. Note that since its 2020 revision of Metropolitan Area Borders, INSEE considers that Nice is a metropolitan area separate from the Cannes Antibes metropolitan area. These two combined would have a population of 1 million as of the 2019 census. Rural flight was a perennial political issue throughout most of the 20th century. Subheading Language. The official language of France is French a Romance language derived from Latin. Since 1635, the Académie Française has been France's official authority on the French language, although its recommendations carry no legal weight. There are also regional languages spoken in French, such as Occitan, Breton, Catalan, Flemish, Dutch dialect, Alsatian, a German dialect, Basque, and Corsic, an Italian dialect. Italian was the official language of Corsica until 9 May 1859. The government of France does not regulate the choice of language in publications by individuals, but the use of French is required by law in commercial and workplace communications. In addition to mandating the use of French in the territory of the Republic, the French government tries to promote French in the European Union and globally through institutions such as the Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie. The perceived threat from anglicization has prompted efforts to safeguard the position of the French language in France. Besides French, there exist 77 vernacular minority languages of France, eight spoken in French metropolitan territory and 69 in the French overseas territories. From the 17th to the mid-20th century, French served as the preeminent international language of diplomacy and international affairs, as well as a lingua franca among the educated classes of Europe. The dominant position of the French language in international affairs was overtaken by English since the emergence of the United States as a major power. For most of the time in which French served as an international lingua franca, it was not the native language of most Frenchmen. A report in 1794 conducted by Henri Grégoire found that of the country's 25 million people, only 3 million spoke French natively. The rest spoke one of the country's many regional languages, such as Alsatian, Breton, or Occitan. Through the expansion of public education, in which French was the sole language of instruction, as well as other factors, such as increased urbanization and the rise of mass communication, French gradually came to be adopted by virtually the entire population, a process not completed until the 20th century. As a result of France's extensive colonial ambitions between the 17th and 20th centuries, French was introduced to the Americas, Africa, Polynesia, Southeast Asia, as well as the Caribbean. French is the second most studied foreign language in the world after English, and is a lingua franca in some regions, notably in Africa. The legacy of French as a living language outside Europe is mixed. It is nearly extinct in some former French colonies, the Levant, South and Southeast Asia, while Creoles and Pigeons based on French have emerged in the French departments in the West Indies and the South Pacific, French Polynesia. On the other hand, many former French colonies have adopted French as an official language and the total number of French speakers is increasing, especially in Africa. 
It is estimated that between 300 million and 500 million people worldwide can speak French, either as a mother tongue or as a second language. According to the 2007 Adult Education Survey, part of a project by the European Union and carried out in France by the INSEE and based on a sample of 15,350 persons, French was the native language of 87.2% of the total population, or roughly 55.8 million people, followed by Arabic, 3.6% or 2.3 million, Portuguese, 1.5% or 960,000, Spanish, 1.2% or 770,000, and Italian, 1%, 640,000. Native speakers of other languages made up the remaining 5.2% of the population. Subheading, religion. France is a secular country in which freedom of religion is a constitutional right. French religious policy is based on the concept of laicité, a strict separation of church and state, under which public life is kept completely secular. The exception to this is the region of Alsace and Moselle, where Lutheranism, Catholicism, and Judaism enjoy official status and state funding. According to a survey held in 2016 by Institut Montaigne and Institut Francais d'Opinion Publique, IFOP, 51.1% of the total population of France was Christian, 39.6% had no religion, atheism or agnosticism, 5.6% were Muslims, 2.5% were followers of other faiths, and the remaining 0.4% were undecided about their faith. Estimates of the number of Muslims in France vary widely. In 2003, the French Ministry of the Interior estimated the total number of people of Muslim background to be between 5 and 6 million, or 8 to 10 percent. The current Jewish community in France is the largest in Europe and the third largest in the world after Israel and the United States ranging between 480,000 and 600,000, about eight-tenths of a percent of the population as of 2016. Catholicism has been the predominant religion in France for more than a millennium, though it is not as actively practiced today as it was. Among the 47,000 religious buildings in France, 94% are Roman Catholic. During the French Revolution, activists conducted a brutal campaign of de-Christianization, ending the Catholic Church as a state religion. In some cases, clergy and churches were attacked, with iconoclasm stripping the churches of statues and ornaments. After alternating between royal and secular republican governments during the 19th century, in 1905 France passed the 1905 Law on the Separation of the Churches and the State, which established the principle of laïcité. To this day, The government is prohibited from recognizing any specific right to a religious community, except for the legacy statutes in Alsace-Moselle, that recognizes religious organizations according to formal legal criteria that do not address religious doctrine. Conversely, religious organizations are expected to refrain from intervening in policymaking. Certain groups, such as Scientology, Children of God, the Unification Church, and the Order of the Solar Temple, are considered cults, sectes in French. Therefore, they do not have the same status as recognized religions in France. Sect is considered a pejorative term in France. Subheading, health. The French healthcare system is one of universal healthcare, largely financed by government national health insurance. In its 2000 assessment of world healthcare systems, the World Health Organization found that France provided the close to best overall health care in the world. The French health care system was ranked first worldwide by the WHO in 1997. In 2011, France spent 11.6% of its GDP on health care, or 4,086 U.S. dollars per capita, a figure much higher than the average spent by countries in Europe, but less than in the United States. Approximately 77% of health expenditures are covered by government-funded agencies. Care is generally free for people affected by chronic diseases, affections de longue durée, such as cancer, AIDS, or cystic fibrosis. Average life expectancy at birth is 78 years for men and 85 years for women, one of the highest in the European Union and the world. There are 3.22 physicians for every 1,000 inhabitants in France, and average health care spending per capita was $4,719 U.S. in 2008. 
As of 2007, there were 140,000 inhabitants of France, approximately, who were living with HIV AIDS. Although the French have a reputation of being one of the thinnest people in developed countries, France, like other rich countries, faces an increasing and recent epidemic of obesity, due mostly to the replacement in French eating habits of traditional healthy cuisine by junk food. The French obesity rate is still far below that of the United States, currently equal to the American rate in the 1970s, and is still the lowest in Europe. Authorities now regard obesity as one of the main public health issues and fight it fiercely. Rates of childhood obesity are slowing in France while continuing to grow in other countries. Subheading, education. In 1802, Napoleon created the Lycée, the second and final stage of secondary education that prepares students for higher education studies or a profession. Nevertheless, Jules Ferry is considered the father of the French modern school, leading reforms in the late 19th century that established free, secular, and compulsory education, which is currently mandatory until the age of 16. French education is centralized and divided into three stages, primary, secondary, and higher education. The Programme for International Student Assessment, coordinated by the OECD, ranked France's education as near the OECD average in 2018. France was one of the PISA participating countries where school children perceived some of the lowest levels of support and feedback from their teachers. School children in France reported greater concern about disciplinary climate and behavior in classrooms compared to other OECD countries. Primary and secondary education are predominantly public and run by the Ministry of National Education, while training and remuneration of teachers and the curriculum are the responsibility of the state centrally. The management of primary and secondary schools is overseen by local authorities. Primary education comprises two phases, nursery school, école maternelle, and elementary school, école élémentaire. Nursery school aims to stimulate the minds of very young children and promote their socialization and development of a basic grasp of language and numbers. Around the age of six, children transfer to elementary school, whose primary objectives are learning about writing, arithmetic, and citizenship. Secondary education also consists of two phases. The first is delivered through colleges, collège, and leads to the national certificate, Diplôme National du Brevet. The second is offered in high schools, lycée, and finishes in national exams leading to a baccalaureate, baccalauréat, available in professional, technical, or general flavors, or Certificate of Professional Competence, Certificat d'Aptitude Professionnelle. Higher education is divided between public universities and the prestigious and selective Grande École, such as Sciences Po Paris for political studies, HEC Paris for economics, Polytechnique, the École des Hautes Études en Sciences Sociales for social studies, and the École Nationale Supérieure des Mines de Paris that produce high-profile engineers, or the École Nationale d'Administration for careers in the Grand Corps of the state. The Grand École have been criticized for alleged elitism, producing many, if not most, of France's high-ranking civil servants, CEOs, and politicians. Section 7. Culture. The creation of the Ministry of Culture in 1959 helped preserve the cultural heritage of the country and make it available to the public by granting subsidies to artists, promoting French culture in the world, supporting festivals and cultural events, and protecting historical monuments. The French government also succeeded in maintaining a cultural exception in the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade to defend audiovisual products made in the country. France has 1,200 museums visited by more than 50 million people annually. The most important cultural sites are run by the government, for instance, through the public agency Centre des Monuments Nationaux, which is responsible for approximately 85 historical monuments. The 43,180 buildings protected as historical monuments include mainly residences, mostly castles, and religious buildings, cathedrals, basilicas, churches, but also statues, memorials, and gardens. UNESCO inscribed 45 sites in France on the World Heritage List. Subheading, art. The origins of French art were very much influenced by Flemish art and by Italian art, 
at the time of the Renaissance. Jean Fouquet, the most famous medieval French painter, is said to have been the first to travel to Italy and experience the early Renaissance firsthand. The Renaissance painting, School of Fontainebleau, was directly inspired by Italian painters such as Primaticcio and Rosso Fiorentino, who both worked in France. Two of the most famous French artists of the time of the Baroque era, Nicolas Poussin and Claude Dorin, lived in Italy. The 17th century was the period when French painting became prominent and individualized itself through classicism. Prime Minister Jean-Baptiste Colbert founded the Royal Academy of Painting and Sculpture in 1648 under Louis XIV to protect these artists. In 1666, he also created the still active French Academy in Rome to have direct relations with Italian artists. French artists developed the Rococo style in the 18th century as a more intimate imitation of the old Baroque style. The works of the court endorsed artists Antoine Watteau, François Boucher, and Jean Honoré Fragonard being the most representative in the country. The French Revolution brought great changes. As Napoleon favored artists of neoclassic style, such as Jacques Dewey David, and the highly influential Académie des Beaux-Arts defined the style known as academism. At this time, France had become a center of artistic creation, the first half of the 19th century being dominated by two successive movements, at first Romanticism with Théodore Géricault and Eugène Delacroix, then Realism with Camille Corot, Gustave Courbet, and Jean-François Millet, a style that eventually evolved into naturalism. In the second part of the 19th century, France's influence over painting grew, with the development of new styles of painting, such as Impressionism and Symbolism. The most famous Impressionist painters of the period were Camille Pizarro, Édouard Manet, Edgar Degas, Claude Monet, and Auguste Renoir. The second generation of Impressionist style painters, Paul Cézanne, Paul Gauguin, Toulouse-Lautrec and Georges Seurat were also at the avant-garde of artistic evolutions, as well as the farthest artists, Henri Matisse, André Derrin, and Maurice de Blamenec. At the beginning of the 20th century, Cubism was developed by Georges Braque and the Spanish painter Pablo Picasso, living in Paris. Other foreign artists also settled and worked in or near Paris, such as Vincent van Gogh, Marc Chagall, Amadeo Modigliani, and Vasily Kandinsky. There are many art museums in France, the most famous of which being the state-owned Musée du Louvre, which collects artwork from the 18th century and earlier. The Musée d'Orsay was inaugurated in 1986 in the old railway station Gare d'Orsay in a major reorganization of national art collections to gather French paintings from the second part of the 19th century mainly Impressionism and Fauvism movements. It was voted the best museum in the world in 2018. Modern works are presented in the Musée National d'Art Moderne, which was moved in 1976 to the Centre Georges Pompidou. These three state-owned museums are visited by close to 17 million people a year. Other national museums hosting paintings include the Grand Palais, 1.3 visitors in 2008, but there are also many museums owned by cities, the most visited being the Musée de l'Art Moderne de la Ville de Paris, 800,000 million visitors in 2008, which hosts contemporary works. Outside Paris, all the large cities have a museum of fine arts with a section dedicated to European and French painting. Some of the finest collections are in Dion, Lille, Rouen, Dijon, Rennes, and Grenoble. Subsection, architecture. During the Middle Ages, many fortified castles were built by feudal nobles to mark their powers. Some French castles that survived are Chinon, Château d'Angers, and the massive Château de Vincennes, and the so-called Cathar castles. During this era, France had been using Romanesque architecture like most of Western Europe. Some of the greatest examples of Romanesque churches in France are the saint sarnin Basilica in Toulouse, the largest Romanesque church in Europe, and the remains of Cluny Abbey. Gothic architecture, originally named Opus Francogenum, meaning French work, was born in Ile de France and was the first French style of architecture to be copied in all of Europe. 
Northern France is the home of some of the most important Gothic cathedrals and basilicas, the first of these being Saint-Denis Basilica, used as the royal necropolis. Other important French Gothic cathedrals are Notre-Dame de Chartres and Notre-Dame de Amiens. The kings were crowned in another important Gothic church, Notre-Dame de Reims. Aside from churches, Gothic architecture had been used for many religious palaces, the most important one being the Palais des Papes in Avignon. The final victory in the Hundred Years' War marked an important stage in the evolution of French architecture. It was the time of the French Renaissance, and several artists from Italy were invited to the French court. Many residential palaces were built in the Loire Valley. From 1450, as a first reference, the Château de Montsoreau. Such residential castles were the Château de Chambord, the Château de Chenonceau, or the Château d'Amboise. Following the Renaissance and the end of the Middle Ages, Baroque architecture replaced the traditional Gothic style. However, in France, Baroque architecture found greater success in the secular domain than in the religious one. In the secular domain, the Palace of Versailles has many Baroque features. Jules Hardouin Mansart, who designed the extensions to Versailles, was one of the most influential French architects of the Baroque era. He is famous for his dome at Les Invalides. Some of the most impressive provincial Baroque architecture is found in places that were not yet French, such as Place Stanislas in Nancy. On the military architectural side, Vauban designed some of the most efficient fortresses in Europe and became an influential military architect. As a result, imitations of his works can be found all over Europe, the Americas, Russia, and Turkey. After the Revolution, the Republicans favored neoclassicism, although it was introduced in France before the Revolution with such buildings as the Parisian Pantheon or the Capitole de Toulouse. Built during the First French Empire, the Arc de Triomphe and Sainte Marie Madeleine represent the best example of empire style architecture. Under Napoleon III, a new way of, of urbanism and architecture was given birth. Extravagant buildings such as the neo baroque Palais Garnier were built. The urban planning of the time was very organized and rigorous, most notably Haussmann's renovation of Paris. The architecture associated with this era is named Second Empire in English, the term being taken from the Second French Empire. At this time, there was a strong Gothic resurgence across Europe and in France. The associated architect was Eugène Violet le Duc. In the late 19th century, Gustave Eiffel designed many bridges, such as the Garabi Viaduct, and remains one of the most influential bridge designers of his time, although he is best remembered for the iconic Eiffel Tower. In the 20th century, French-Swiss architect Le Corbusier designed several buildings in France. More recently, French architects have combined both modern and old architectural styles. The Louvre Pyramid is an example of modern architecture added to an older building. The most difficult buildings to integrate within French cities are skyscrapers, as they are visible from afar. For instance, in Paris, since 1977, new buildings had to be under 37 meters high. France's largest financial district is La Défense, where a significant number of skyscrapers are located. Other massive buildings that are a challenge to integrate into their environment are large bridges. An example of the way this has been done is the Milau Viaduct. Some famous modern French architects include Jean Nouvel, Dominique Perrault, Christian de Potzampac, and Paul Andreau. Subheading, literature. The earliest French literature dates from the Middle Ages when what is now known as modern France did not have a single uniform language. There were several languages and dialects and writers used their own spelling and grammar. Some authors of French medieval texts, such as Tristan and Isolde and Lancelot Creel, are unknown. Three famous medieval authors are Chrétien de Troyes, Christian de Pizan, Languedoc, and Duke William IX of Aquitaine, Languedoc. Such medieval French poetry and literature was inspired by the legends of the Carolingian cycle, Song of Roland, and various chansons de geste. The Roman de Renard, written in 1175 by Perrou de Saint-Cloud, tells the story of the medieval character Renard, the fox, and is another example of early French writing. An important 16th century writer was Francois Rabelais, 
who wrote five popular early Pekaresque novels. Rabelais was also in regular communication with Marguerite de Navarre, author of the Heptameron. Another 16th century author was Michel de Montaigne, whose most famous work, Essay, started a literary genre, Essays. Pierre de Ronsard and Joachim du Bellay were the founders of the La Pléiade poetic movement. In 1678, Madame de Lafayette anonymously published La Princesse de Clèves, a widely praised psychological novel. Jean de La Fontaine is a famous 17th century fabulist who borrowed from Aesop. Generations of French school children had to learn his fables by heart as they were thought to teach wisdom and common sense. Some of his verses have entered the popular language to become proverbs. Jean Racine, who wrote plays such as Phèdre or Britannicus using Alexandrines, is considered one of the three great dramatists of France's golden age, along with Pierre Cronaille, Lucide, and Molière, who wrote dozens of plays including Le Misanthrope, La Varre, La Malade Imaginaire, and Le Bourgeois Gentilhomme. French is sometimes referred to as the language of Molière. French literature and poetry flourished during the 18th and 19th centuries. Denis de Dejo's best-known works are Jacques the Fatalist and Rameau's Nephew. He is best known, however, as the main editor of the Encyclopédie, whose aim was to sum up all of the knowledge of his century in fields such as arts, sciences, languages, and philosophy, and to fight ignorance and obscurantism. During that same century, Charles Perrault was a prolific writer of children's fairy tales, including Puss in Boots, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, and Bluebeard. At the start of the 19th century, symbolist poetry was an important movement in French literature, with poets such as Charles Baudelaire, Paul Verlaine, and Stéphane Mellarmé. The 19th century saw the writings of many renowned French authors. Victor Hugo is sometimes seen as, quote, the greatest French writer of all time, close quote, for excelling in all literary genres. The preface of his play Cromwell is considered to be the manifesto of the Romantic movement. Les Contemplations and La Légende des siècles are considered poetic masterpieces. Hugo's verse has been compared to that of Shakespeare, Dante, and Homer. His novel Les Miserables is widely seen as one of the greatest novels ever written, and The Hunchback of Notre Dame has remained immensely popular. Other major authors of that century include Alexandre Dumas, The Three Musketeers and The Count of Monte Cristo, Jules Verne, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Emile Zola, Les Rougans Macquart, Honoré de Balzac, La Comédie Humaine, Guy de Maupassant, Théophile Cotier, and Stendhal, The Red and the Black, The Charter House of Parma whose works are among the most well-known in France and the world. The Prix Goncourt is a French literary prize first awarded in 1903. In the early 20th century, France was a haven for literary freedom. Works banned for obscenity in the US, the UK, and other Anglophone nations were published in France decades before they were available in the respective author's home countries. The innate French regard for the mind meant that France was disinclined to punish literary figures for their writing, and prosecutions were rare. Important writers of the 20th century include Marcel Proust, Louis Ferdinand Céline, Albert Camus, and Jean-Paul Sartre. Antoine de Saint-Exupéry wrote Little Prince, which has remained popular for decades. As of 2014, French authors had more literature Nobel Prizes than those of any other nation. The first Nobel Prize in Literature was for a French author, while France's latest Nobel Prize in Literature was for Patrick Modiano, who was awarded the prize in 2014. Jean-Paul Sartre was also the first nominee in the committee's history to refuse the prize in 1964. Subheading, Philosophy. Medieval philosophy was dominated by scholasticism until the emergence of humanism in the Renaissance. Modern philosophy began in France in the 17th century with the philosophy of René Descartes, Blaise Pascal, and Nicolas Malebranche. Descartes was the first Western philosopher since ancient times to attempt to build a philosophical system from the ground up, rather than building on the works of predecessors. His meditations on first philosophy changed the primary object of philosophical thought and raised some of the most fundamental problems for foreigners, such as Spinoza, Leibniz, Hume, Berkeley, and Kant. 
French philosophers produced some of the most important political works of the Age of Enlightenment. In the spirit of the laws, Bertrand de Montesquieu theorized the principle of separation of powers, which has been implemented in all liberal democracies since it was first applied in the United States. Voltaire came to embody the Enlightenment with its defense of civil liberties, such as the right to a free trial and freedom of religion. 19th century French thought was targeted at responding to the social malaise following the French Revolution. Rationalist philosophers such as Victor Cousin and Auguste Comte, who called for a new social doctrine, were opposed by reactionary thinkers such as Joseph de Maistre, Louis de Bonal, and Félicité Robert de Lamene, who blamed the rationalist rejection of traditional order. De Maistre, together with the Englishman Edmund Burke, was one of the founders of European conservatism. Comte was the founder of positivism, which Emile Durkheim reformulated as a basis for social research. In the 20th century, particularly as a reaction to the perceived excesses of positivism, French spiritualism thrived with thinkers such as Henri Bergson, and it influenced American pragmatism and Whitehead's version of process philosophy. Meanwhile, French epistemology became a prominent school of thought, with Jules-Henri Poincaré, Gaston Bachelard, Jean Cavier, and Jules Vuillemin. Influenced by German phenomenology and existentialism, the philosophy of Jean-Paul Sartre gained a strong influence after World War II, and late 20th century France became a cradle of postmodern philosophy, with Jean-Francois Lyotard, Jean Baudrillard, Jacques Derrida, and Michel Foucault. Subheading, music. France has a long and varied musical history. It experienced a golden age in the 17th century thanks to Louis XIV, who employed many talented musicians and composers in the royal court. The most renowned composers of this period include Marc-Antoine Charpentier, François Couperin, Michel Richard de Lalande, Jean-Baptiste Lully, and Marin Marais, all of them composers at the court. After the death of the Croix Soleil, French musical creation lost dynamism, but the next century of the music of Jean-Philippe Rameau reached some prestige, and today he is still one of the most renowned French composers. Rameau became the dominant composer of French opera and the leading French composer of the harpsichord. French composers played an important role in the music of the 19th and early 20th century, which is considered to be the Romantic music era. Romantic music emphasized a surrender to nature, a fascination with the past and the supernatural, the exploration of unusual, strange, and surprising sounds, and a focus on national identity. This period was also a golden age for operas. French composers from the Romantic era included Hector Berlioz, best known for his Symphonie Fantastique, Georges Bizet, best known for Carmen, which has become one of the most popular and frequently performed operas, Gabriel Fauré, best known for his Pavan, Requiem, and Nocturne, Charles Gounou, best known for his Ave Maria and his opera Faust, Jacques Offenbach, best known for his 100 operettas of the 1850s to 1870s and his uncompleted opera, The Tales of Hoffmann, Édouard Lalo, best known for his Symphonie Espagnole for violin and orchestra and his cello concerto in D minor, Jules Massenet, best known for his operas, of which he wrote more than 30, the most frequently staged are Manon, 1884, and Werther, 1892, and Camille Saint-Saint. He has many frequently performed works, including The Carnival of the Animals, Danse Macabre, Samson and Delilah, an opera, Introduction, and Rondo Capriccioso, and his Symphony No. 3. Later came precursors of modern classical music, Eric Satie, was a key member of the early 20th century Parisian avant-garde, best known for his Gymnopédie. Francis Poulenc's best-known works are his Piano Suite Trois Mouvements Perpetuels, 1919, the Ballet Les Biches, 1923, the Concert Champêtre, 1928, for harpsichord and orchestra, the Opera Dialogue des Camélites, 1957, and the Gloria, 1959, for soprano, choir, and orchestra. Maurice Ravel and Claude Debussy are the most prominent figures associated with Impressionist music. Debussy was among the most influential composers of the late 19th and early 20th centuries, and his use of non-traditional scales and chromaticism influenced many composers who followed. 
Debussy's music is noted for its sensory content and frequent usage of atonality. The two composers invented new musical forms and new sounds. Robel's piano compositions such as Judo, Miroir, Le Tambeau de Couperin, and Gaspard de la Nuit demand considerable virtuosity. His mastery of orchestration is evident in the Rhapsodie Espagnole, Daphne et Chloé, his arrangement of Modeste Mergoski's pictures at an exhibition, and his orchestral work Bolero, 1928. More recently, in the middle of the 20th century, Maurice Ohana, Pierre Schaeffer, and Pierre Boulet contributed to the evolution of contemporary classical music. French music then followed the rapid emergence of pop and rock music in the middle of the 20th century. Although English-speaking creations achieved popularity in the country, French pop music, known as Chanson Française, has also remained very popular. Among the most important French artists of the century are Edith Piaf, Georges Brassin, Léo Ferré, Charles Aznavour, and Serge Gainsbourg. Although there are very few rock bands in France compared to English-speaking countries, bands such as Noir Désir, Mano Negra, Niagara, Desrita Misuko, and more recently Superbus, Phoenix, and Gohira, or Chaka Punk, have reached worldwide popularity. Other French artists with international careers have been popular in several countries, most notably female singers Dalida, Mirai Mathieu, Mylène Farmer, Alizé, and Norwen Leroy, electronic music pioneers Jean-Michel Jarre, Laurent Gagné, and Bob Sinclair, later Martin Solveig, and David Guetta. In the 1990s and 2000s, Electronic duos Daft Punk, Justice, and Air also reached worldwide popularity and contributed to the reputation of modern electronic music in the world. Among current musical events and institutions in France, many are dedicated to classical music and operas. The most prestigious institutions are the state-owned Paris National Opera, with its two sites, Palais Garnier and Opéra Bastille, the Opéra National de Lyon, the Théâtre du Châtelet in Paris, the Théâtre du Capitole in Toulouse, and the Grand Théâtre de Bordeaux. As for music festivals, there are several events organized, the most popular being European, a wordplay which sounds in French as European, Solides, and Rock en Seine. The Fête de la Musique, imitated by many foreign cities, was first launched by the French government in 1982. Major music halls and venues in France include Le Zénith, sites present in many cities and other places in Paris. Paris Olympia, Théâtre Mogador, Élysée Montmartre. Subsection. Cinema. France has historical and strong links with cinema, with two Frenchmen, Auguste and Louis Lumière, known as the Lumière brothers, credited with creating cinema in 1895. The world's first female filmmaker, Alice Guy Blanchet, was also from France. Several important cinematic movements, including the late 1950s and 1960s Nouvelle Vague, began in the country. It is noted for having a strong film industry, due in part to protections afforded by the government of France. France remains a leader in filmmaking as of 2015, producing more films than any other European country. The nation also hosts the Cannes Festival, one of the most important and famous film festivals in the world. Apart from its strong and innovative film tradition, France has also been a gathering spot for artists from across Europe and the world. For this reason, French cinema is sometimes intertwined with the cinema of foreign nations. Directors from nations such as Poland, Roman Polanski, Krzysztof Kieslowski, Andrzej Zuwawski, Argentina, Gaspar Noé, Edgardo Kozarinsky, Russia, Alexandra Alexiev, Anatol Litvak, Austria, Michael Haneke, and Georgia, Gela Babduani, Otar Yoseliani, are prominent in the ranks of French cinema. Conversely, French directors have had prolific and influential careers in other countries, such as Luc Besson, Jacques Tourneur, or Francis Weber in the United States. Although the French film market is dominated by Hollywood, 
France is the only nation in the world where American films make up the smallest share of total film revenues, at 50%, compared with 77% in Germany and 69% in Japan. French films account for 35% of the total film revenues of France, which is the highest percentage of national film revenues in the developed world outside the United States, compared to 14% in Spain and 8% in the UK. In 2013, France was the second greatest exporter of films in the world, after the United States. As part of its advocacy of cultural exception, a political concept of treating culture differently from other commercial products, France succeeded in convincing all EU members to refuse to include cultural and audiovisuals in the list of liberalized sectors of the WTO in 1993. Moreover, this decision was confirmed in a vote by UNESCO in 2005. The principle of cultural exception won an overwhelming majority with 198 countries voting for it and only two countries, the United States and Israel, voting against it. Subheading, fashion. Fashion has been an important industry and cultural export of France since the 17th century, and modern haute couture originated in Paris in the 1860s. Today, Paris, along with London, Milan, and New York City, is considered one of the world's fashion capitals, and the city is home or headquarters to many of the premier fashion houses. The expression haute couture is, in France, a legally protected name, guaranteeing certain quality standards. The association of France with fashion and style, French la mode, dates largely to the reign of Louis XIV, when the luxuries goods industries in France came increasingly under royal control and the French court became, arguably, the arbiter of taste and style in Europe. But France renewed its dominance of the high fashion, French couture or haute couture, industry in the years 1860 to 1960, through the establishment of the great couturier houses such as Chanel, Dior, and Givenchy. The French perfume industry is the world leader in its sector and is centered on the town of Grasse. In the 1960s, haute couture came under criticism from France's youth culture. In 1966, the designer Yves Saint Laurent broke with established haute couture norms by launching a prêt-à-porter, or ready-to-wear, line and expanding French fashion into mass manufacturing. With a greater focus on marketing and manufacturing, new trends were established by Sonia Raquel, Thierry Mugler, Claude Montana, Jean-Paul Gaultier, and Christian Lacroix in the 1970s and 1980s. The 1990s saw a conglomeration of many French couture houses under luxury giants and multinationals such as LVMH. According to 2017 data compiled by Deloitte, Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy, LVMH, or LVMH in French, a French brand, is the largest luxury company in the world by sales, selling more than twice the amount of its nearest competitor. Moreover, France also possesses three of the top 10 luxury goods companies by sales, LVMH, Carcan SA, L'Oréal, more than any other country in the world. Subheading, media. In 2021, regional daily newspapers like West France, Sud-Ouest, La Voix du Nord, Dauphiné Libéré, Le Telegram, and Le Progrès more than doubled the sales of national newspapers like Le Monde, Le Figaro, L'Equipe of Sports, Le Parisien, and Les Echos in finance. Free dailies distributed in metropolitan centers continue to increase their market share. The sector of weekly magazines includes more than 400 specialized weekly magazines published in the country. The most influential news magazines are the left-wing Le Nouvel Observateur, centrist L'Express, and right-wing Le Point. In 2009, more than 400,000 copies. But the highest circulation numbers for weeklies are attained by TV magazines and by women's magazines, among them Marie Claire and Elle, which have foreign versions. Influential weeklies also include investigative and satirical papers, Le Canard Enchaîné and Charlie Hebdo, as well as Paris Match. As in most industrialized nations, the print media have been affected by a severe crisis with the rise of the internet. In 2008, 
the government launched a major initiative to help the sector reform and become financially independent. But in 2009, it had to give 600,000 euros to help the print media cope with the economic crisis, in addition to existing subsidies. In 1974, after years of centralized monopoly on radio and television, the governmental agency ORTF, ORTF was split into several national institutions, but the three already existing TV channels and four national radio stations remained under state control. It was only in 1981 that the government allowed free broadcasting in the territory of France, ending the state monopoly on radio. French television was partly liberalized in the next two decades with the creation of several commercial channels, mainly thanks to cable and satellite television. In 2005, the National Service Télévision Numérique Terrestre introduced digital television all over the territory, allowing the creation of other channels. The four existing national channels are owned by the state-owned consortium France Télévision, funded by advertising revenue and TV license fees. Public broadcasting group Radio France runs five national radio stations. Among these public media are Radio France Internationale, which broadcasts programs in French all over the world, as well as a Franco-German TV channel, TV5 Monde. In 2006, the government created the global news channel France 24, subheading Society. According to a BBC poll in 2010, based on 29,977 responses in 28 countries, France is globally seen as a positive influence in the world's affairs. 49% have a positive view of the country's influence, whereas 19% have a negative view. The Nation Brand Index of 2008 suggested that France has the second best international reputation, only behind Germany. A global opinion poll for the BBC saw France ranked the fourth most positively viewed nation in the world, behind Germany, Canada, and the United Kingdom, in 2014. According to a poll in 2011, the French were found to have the highest level of religious tolerance and to be the country where the highest proportion of the population defines its identity primarily in terms of nationality and not religion. As of 2011, 75% of French had a favorable view of the United States, making France one of the most pro-American countries in the world. As of 2017, the favorable view of the United States had dropped to 46%. In January 2010, the magazine International Living ranked France as the best country to live in, ahead of 193 other countries for the fifth year running. The OECD Better Life Index states that France performs well in many measures of well-being relative to most other countries in the Better Life Index. The French Revolution continues to permeate the country's collective memory. The tricolor flag of France, the anthem La Marseillaise, the motto Liberté, Égalité, Fraternité, defined in Title I of the Constitution as national symbols, all emerged during the cultural ferment of the early revolution along with Marianne, a common national personification. In addition, Bastille Day, the national holiday, commemorates the storming of the Bastille on 14 July 1789. A common and traditional symbol of the French people is the Gallic rooster. Its origins date back to antiquity since the Latin word Gallus means both rooster and inhabitant of Gaul. Then this figure gradually became the most widely shared representation of the French, used by French monarchs, then by the Revolution, and under successive Republican regimes as representation of the national identity, used for some stamps and coins. France is one of the world leaders of gender equality in the workplace. As of 2017, it has 36.8% of its corporate board seats held by women, which makes it the leader of the G20 for that metric. It was ranked in 2019 by the World Bank as one of the only six countries in the world where women have the same work rights as men. France is one of the most liberal countries in the world when it comes to LGBT rights. A 2020 Pew Research Center poll found that 86% of the French think that same-sex relationships should be accepted by society, one of the highest acceptance rates in the world, comparable to that of other Western European nations. France legalized same-sex marriage and adoption in 2013. The government has used its diplomatic clout to support LGBT rights throughout the world, notably in the United Nations. 
In 2020, France was ranked fifth in the Environmental Performance Index, behind the United Kingdom, out of 180 countries ranked by Yale University in that study. Being the host country of the 2015 Paris Climate Change Conference, the French government was instrumental in securing the 2015 Paris Agreement, a success that has been credited to its openness and experience in diplomacy. Subheading, cuisine. French cuisine is renowned for being one of the finest in the world. Different regions have different styles. In the north, butter and cream are common ingredients, whereas olive oil is more commonly used in the south. Each region of France has iconic traditional specialties. Cassoulet in the southwest, choucroute in Alsace, quiche in the Lorraine region, beef bourguignon in Burgundy, Provençal tapenade, etc. France is most famous for its wines and cheeses, which are often named for the territory where they are produced. The Appellation d'Origine Contrôlée, or AOC. A meal typically consists of three courses, entrée, a starter, plat principal, a main course, and fromage, cheese, or dessert, sometimes with a salad served before the cheese or dessert. French cuisine is also regarded as a key element of the quality of life and the attractiveness of France. A French publication, the Michelin Guide, awards Michelin stars for excellence to select few establishments. The acquisition or loss of a star can have dramatic effects on the success of a restaurant. By 2006, the Michelin Guide had awarded 620 stars to French restaurants. In addition to its wine tradition, France is also a major producer of beer and rum. The three main French brewing regions are Alsace, 60% of national production, Nord-Pas-de-Calais, and Lorraine. French rum is made in distilleries located on islands in the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. Subheading, sports. France hosts the world's biggest annual sporting event, the Tour de France. Other popular sports played in France include football, judo, tennis, rugby union, and pétanque. France has hosted events such as the 1938 and 1998 FIFA World Cups, the 2007 Rugby World Cup, and the 2023 Rugby World Cup. The country also hosts the 1960 European Nations Cup, UEFA Euro 1984, UEFA Euro 2016, and 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup. The Stade de France in Saint-Denis is France's largest stadium and was the venue for the 1998 FIFA World Cup and 2007 Rugby World Cup Finals. Since 1923, France is famous for its 24 Hours of Le Mans sports car endurance race. Several major tennis tournaments take place in France, including the Paris Masters and the French Open, one of the four Grand Slam tournaments. French martial arts include savate and fencing. France has a close association with the modern Olympic Games. It was a French aristocrat, Bertrand Pierre de Coubertin, who suggested the game's revival at the end of the 19th century. After Athens was awarded the first games, in reference to the Olympics' Greek origins, Paris hosted the second games in 1900. Paris was the first home of the International Olympic Committee before it moved to Lausanne. Since 1900, France has hosted the Olympics on four further occasions. The 1924 Summer Olympics, again in Paris, and three Winter Games, 1924 in Chamonix, 1968 in Grenoble, and 1992 in Albreville. Similar to the Olympics, France introduced Olympics for deaf people, the Deaf Olympics, in 1924 with the idea of a French deaf car mechanic, Eugène Rubin Alquet, who paved the way to organize the inaugural edition of the Summer Deaf Olympics in Paris. Both the national football team and the national rugby union team are nicknamed Les Bleus in reference to the team's shirt color, as well as the national French tricolor flag. Football is the most popular sport in France, with over 1,800,000 registered players and over 18,000 registered clubs. The football team is among the most successful in the world, with two FIFA World Cup victories in 1998 and 2018, two FIFA World Cup second places in 2006 and 2022, and two UEFA European Championships in 1984 and 2000. The top national football club competition is Ligue 1. 
France has produced some of the greatest players in the world, including three-time FIFA World Player of the Year Zinedine Zidane, three-time Ballon d'Or recipient Michel Platini, record holder for the most goals scored at a World Cup, Juste Fontaine, first football player to receive the Légion d'Honneur et Monde Copa, and the record goal scorer for the French national team, Thierry Henry. The French Open, also called Roland Garros, is a major tennis tournament held over two weeks between late May and early June at the Stade Roland Garros in Paris. It is the premier clay court tennis championship event in the world and the second of four annual Grand Slam tournaments. Rugby union is popular, particularly in Paris and the southwest of France. The National Rugby Union team has competed at every Rugby World Cup. It takes part in the annual Six Nations Championship. This concludes this recording of the Wikipedia article on France, recorded in early April 2023. This recording and all underlying text is licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike License 3.0. This recording was made by Joseph Morris.